TCU. And it could not be much bigger. The college football playoff begins in a moment. Our coverage brought to you by Ram Trucks. Bruce Buffer getting the crowd fired up. It is time indeed. Jim Harbaugh and Sonny Dykes. Jim's dad, Jack Harbaugh, national championship winning coach at Western Kentucky. Sonny Dykes, the son of a West Texas legend. There's Jack Harbaugh. The late Spike Dykes, who coached the Texas Tech. Jackie Harbaugh, Jim's mom, Jack's wife there next to Jack Harbaugh. TCU won the toss and deferred. Michigan will receive. Luke Laminak, a freshman, kicks off. Roman Wilson is back deepest. And it's a touchback. And here comes Michigan on offense, led by J.J. McCarthy. Cade McNamara started game one. He was the incumbent. McCarthy got the opportunity in week two and ran with it. He's won all 12 of his starts, and he's been particularly great lately. Job's not finished. Let's go. Go blue. Three touchdown passes in each of their last two wins against Ohio State in that undefeated showdown and then the Big Ten Championship against Purdue. He's a sophomore from LaGrange Park, Illinois, just outside Chicago. Like Max Duggan, very highly recruited. He was a five-star recruit. He hands it off. He's they got break great one speed. straight up the middle. Donovan Edwards might go. They wrestle him down from behind. With Blake Corum, their star running back out with an knee injury. Edwards has stepped in and excelled. Well, they went with two tight ends. This is Schoonmaker. Watch him get the block right on the middle linebacker. And if Donovan Edwards gets to the second level of your defense, it's over. They were able to keep him from scoring. A beautiful play by Bud Clark, but nonetheless, what a way to start the game for Michigan. Establishing the run game, the physicality. 53 yards for Edwards. J.J. McCarthy calls it smash fest football. After the play fake, all kinds of time looking for his tight end. Colston Loveland, the freshman, it's an incomplete pass. D. Winters, a linebacker, one of their best players on defense, had the coverage. Here's the Chick-fil-A impact players and Michigan's on offense. Well, Donovan Edwards and Colston Loveland, a couple young players, have really stepped up, partly because of injury, partly because of their talent. Trey Hodges, Tomlinson on defense, and Dominic Williams is a freshman playing in the middle of this TCU defense. It's a 3-3-5, and he's got to hold his own in there. He ran right up the middle for 53 on the first play from scrimmage. Here's Edwards again, and he got stacked up. It's a 3-3-5 defense, and ordinarily, Todd, you think of that as undersized, but fast and athletic. Yeah. If you're TCU concerned about the undersized part against this great offensive line. Yeah, and you've got to be a great tackling team because you're, you're not going to be able to just stand in there and slug it out with the offensive line. So your linebackers and your defensive backs have got to fly downhill and be great tacklers. Joe Gillespie, first year defensive coordinator on this first year staff under Sonny Dykes. Jim Harbaugh's Wolverines looking at third down and seven. Looks like an eight-man drop here. Nope, they're bringing late pressure. They didn't get near McCarthy. Catch Roman Wilson in a good tackle to save a touchdown by Millard Bradford at the nine-yard line. When you play in this structure, as Joe Gillespie said, you have to tackle well because a lot of times you're the only man who can make the tackle. That was a good job by McCarthy reading the coverage and knowing that his crossing route by Roman Wilson had separation. He had protection. He was able to scan the field and find the open man. It's first and goal. It's the big tight end package again. Schoonmaker's in the backfield and Horningford, number 84, 
on the end of the line is almost like an extra offensive lineman. He used to be an offensive lineman. Edwards ahead to the six yard line playing again with a cast on his right hand undisclosed injury suffered at midseason the cast has gotten smaller we talked to them yesterday he said I can do it all right. not the bragging sort of way he just meant physically he can catch it hold it in either arm well, he has really stepped up I mean in the absence of Blake Horn the last two games averaging over 200 yards a game We'll put in Kalel Mullings and he went to the four but I believe there was a false start and there was false start offense not all 11 players came set part of the snap five yard penalty remains second down Southeastern Conference officiating crew led by Jason Autry well the many signs this is a well coached Michigan team they're one of the least penalized teams in the country. They tried to go with a quick snap count that time, and, and a couple of the receivers were not completely set. The line was set. They were ready for the quick count, but you got to have all 11 of them set. Mullings remains in the game. He was a linebacker for almost the entirety of the season. When Corham got hurt, they moved him to offense. Tried to run him powerfully through the middle. He got stacked up at the seven yard line. It'll be third down and goal to go. Jamoy Hodge made the tackle for the TCU defense. You got Hodge, you got D winners, and Johnny Hodges are the three linebackers, your three leading tacklers on this team. In this structure, they get kind of protected because they stack behind those defensive linemen, and they are the ones that have to make most of the plays at the line of scrimmage. Michigan. A very fast starting team. They've scored on their opening drive in 11 out of 13 games. They've scored first in 12 out of 13. The only time they didn't was against Ohio State. Here comes a blitz. McCarthy running for his life. Back outside the 30. Now showing that running ability. All the way just shy of the pylon. They're going to mark him out. It seems near the two-yard line. Dylan Horton had the pressure. And then responded to push him out. Well, D. Winters got good pressure. He beat the left tackle, Ryan Hayes. But you see, again, McCarthy's ability to make a play with his legs, to extend the play, and get it down into a position where Jim Harbaugh is saying, we're going to go for it. Yeah, on wants to send down. an early message. He thinks this is going to be a game a lot about physicality and will. And I think he's going to use a timeout as he's running down the far sideline. Yeah. With the play clock at four. Kalel Mullings in the ball game again. He's the short yardage and goal line back in the last three weeks on this critical fourth down play. Will he stick with the decision to go for the touchdown on the opening draft? We'll find out. Scintillating start to the playoff here in Arizona. Welcome back to the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. And a big early decision for Jim Harbaugh. And on the opening drive of the game, facing fourth and goal from the two, the offense comes back out. Well, it's a full two yards, too. But I think Jim says, look, we've gotten here by our offensive line. Our defense has been one of the best in the country, so worst case scenario, we leave TCU with the ball on the two are inside. And let's go ahead and be aggressive. Mullings, the running back, he's carried the ball only 10 times all year. For most of the year, down close, it was Blake Corum to punch it in. They look kind of confused on what they wanted to do here with their formation. And it's Philly special, their version of it. Loveland broke a tackle. But he's in trouble. Coast and Loveland stop back at the nine yard line. Well, the key was Josh Newton, number 24, did not get fooled. He stayed at home and watched Josh Newton pick up McCarthy. This pass was supposed to go to McCarthy after all the handoffs. And Josh Newton read it, stayed at home, covered the receiver. D. Winters, who's had a brilliant first possession with pressure. That was just excellent defense by TCU. They weren't fooled by the trick play 
and they stayed home and made it. I don't know that I love the call. No, I think you're you just run hard at football. It. That's yep. you know you talk about physicality and the best offensive line in the country, the Joe Moore Award winner two years in a row. That seemed out of character very early for Michigan. And some early magic for TCU. Now Max Duggan. And a little breathing room. Yeah, they got the out ten. to the 10 yard line. Max wants to launch it deep. They do that a lot. Looked like he got hit as he threw it. Intended for Savion Williams. Max, a senior from Council Bluffs, Iowa. And this will be his last season playing for TCU. 36 touchdowns responsible for, whether running or passing, third most in school history. Yvonne Boykin has the only two totals higher. Here's Kendra Miller, powerful runner, one of the best running backs in the country, averaging 103 yards per game. Rod Moore made the tackle after a pickup of just about eight for Miller, who was one of the 10 semifinalists for the Doak Walker Award as the best running back in the country. I think he's very underrated, too. He's got great speed. He's got power. He's 220 pounds. He's got kind of the whole package as a running back. On third down and two, Duggan throws, batted down by Will Johnson, the true freshman who has emerged as a standout in the second half of the season. Well, and he's 6'2", 194 pounds, so he's matched up against the number one receiver, Quentin Johnson, who's bigger. But Will Johnson, right in position, gets that left hand on the football, and his play over the last three or four weeks has been a big part of Michigan's success down the stretch. Made an interception, his very first start against Rutgers, two in the championship game against Purdue. Man, it looked like the punter slipped. Jordy Sandy, still a decent kick, and getting better by the bounce. All the way down to the 34-yard line. Wound up as a 48-yard punt. Already a big play. The fourth down stop by the TCU defense. is brought to you by Verbo, a place for together. AT&T 5G, too much college football is never too much. Modelo, root for those with a fighting spirit. And Cheez-It, official sponsor of the college football playoff. TCU, two wins away from a national title. They've won two of them. The most recent was in 1938 when they finished 11-0 with a win over Carnegie Mellon. In the Sugar Bowl, Davey O'Brien won the Heisman Trophy. Legendary quarterback. Matter of fact, Max Duggan just won the quarterback award. Named in memory and in honor of Davey O'Brien. Followed to my right, Todd Blackledge won that award for Penn State back in 1982. Yep. Great award. Really happy for Max. First TCU player to ever win that award. J.J. McCarthy. Whoa. Throws, and it's intercepted. Picked off and being brought back for a touchdown by Bud Clark. What a great play by Bud Clark in man coverage. Here he is right here. He's got inside. Ronnie Bell's going to try to get him off his mark. But watch Bud Clark. Now it's from the left hash, throwing to the right sideline. The ball's in the air a long time. And Bud Clark did a beautiful job of reading the route and undercutting the throw and turning it into six points. 39-yard return. Five interceptions this year now for Clark, the team high. We talked about how rare the interceptions are thrown by these two quarterbacks. Just the fourth thrown by McCarthy his career 
The interception percentage, 1.44, lowest in Michigan history. Well, TCU is not a heavy man coverage team on early downs. That time, Bud Clark was on Ronnie Bell out of the slot and did a beautiful job of just undercutting the throw. Again, when you make an out route throw from the left hash to the right sideline, that ball stays in the air a while. And you know, not only are these two quarterbacks guys who do a great job avoiding interceptions, but they've done it as a team, too, and other quarterbacks have played. Each team threw only four interceptions yeah. all year coming here. Only Air Force, an option team in Tennessee, yeah. fewer. So a couple of things out of character early for Michigan, yeah. the trick play, uh, and they're great on fourth down. Yeah, they were the Didn't best in it. the country. Yeah, and uh, went for something a little different. They used the timeout. They changed the play. Remember, they had the short yardage personnel in there first. I'm sure Jim Harbaugh wishes he had that play back. And now he finds himself behind on the scoreboard. Well, for the underdog, TCU Horn Frogs, who, as Tiffany Black pointed out, we have a team filled with guys who've never even played in a bowl game, never mind the playoff. An exhilarating start. The big defensive stop after they got put immediately on their heels by the 53-yard run to start the game by Edwards. And now the defensive score by Bud Clark, sophomore from Alexandria, Louisiana. And remember, one of the things Jim Harbaugh raves about J.J. McCarthy is his ability to come back after a bad play and the very next possession just go right down the field, shake it off. We'll get a chance to see that resiliency from his young quarterback right now. Out of the pistol on first down. Donovan Edwards. For two. D. Winters drove him back. Senior from Brenham, Texas, one of their team captains. Interesting defense, and it's not something that Michigan sees hardly ever. I mean, everybody in college football plays some version of this that Joe Gillespie's running on third downs, but you don't face too many teams that are all in all the time with this structure. We went to it a couple years ago in Tulsa. It's, it's really designed to defend spread offenses in the Big 12, but you got to be able to tackle. Edwards again. Find some room off right tackle, and then he got blasted. Mark Perry finished him off. They are determined to prove the point that they are a physical team, too, and that message was just sent. Mark Perry, a transfer from Colorado. They had eight transfers on their defense, six of them in the two deep. And Mark Perry, one of the real leaders. Both guys on that tackle transfers. Johnny Hodges came over from Navy. Reached out to every Power 5 team in the country when he was in the portal. Only TCU responded. They are thrilled that they did. Third down and four for Michigan. McCarthy, receiver and defender tangled up. No flag. The Thorpe Award winner, Trey Hodges Tomlinson, had the coverage on Cornelius Johnson. Well, it was tight coverage, and I think Corny Johnson fell down as well. So really nowhere to go with the football. And ball actually hit. Hodges Tomlinson, and we should note also, Roman Wilson caught the ball in that first possession, got hurt. He's in the locker room, so they're playing without one of their better starting receivers in the game right now. There's Brad Robbins, graduate student, three-year starter at punter, and an excellent career. 43 yards per punt. Second best in Michigan history behind Will Hart. They came after him and got very close to it, did Abe Kamara. Darius Davis lets it bounce. And the Wolverine down to the 24. 45-yard punt. The first score of the game comes on defense. Bud Clark, 7-0 TCU. back the previous three years, but at the beginning of the year, he was behind Chandler Morris. Morris got hurt in the opener and opened the door for Max Duggan. And he walked right through it all the way to New York in the Heisman Trophy ceremony. But last time out, an emotional loss. There's nothing more that, than I want is to, you know, get to a school championship. Their only loss of the year in the Big 12 title game to Kansas State.
still a legendary performance by Duggan with the way he brought them back from 11 down late. Here's Kendra Miller. Some running room and a first down. Rod Moore managed to get him out of bounds at the 38 yard line after a 14 yard rumble by the junior from Mount Enterprise, Texas. A really nice job by Andrew Coker, the right tackle, just kind of walling his guy inside. Michigan not able to set the edge of the defense on that play. Miller, powerful running back at 220. He can run away from you as well. Squat 650. They got wrapped up by Mozzie Smith. Stand down the middle of that defensive line. The Chick-fil-A impact players when TCU is on offense. Yeah, Kendra Miller, who just carried the football twice. Quentin Johnston, they tried to go to him on a third down play. He's the big play receiver. And Mike Morris is back playing number 90. He's not on the field right now, but he's healthier than he's been for the last three or four weeks. And he makes a big difference on their defensive front. First team all Big Ten defensive end despite missing time, especially late in the year with an ankle injury. On second and seven. Duggan under duress, and it's dropped, and probably a good thing for Miller that he couldn't catch it. Off his hands, DJ Turner came on a blitz to blow up that play. Yeah, they tried to throw a screen right to where the blitz came from, but DJ T Turner is the fastest guy on this Michigan defense. He was coming from the short side of the field, and he was able to get to Duggan and make it a bad throw. Mari Di Mercado comes in a lot on third down as the running back. Some movement along the line. There's a flag. It might be a free play for Duggan. He takes off running and dives ahead with a first down. In the Michigan territory at the 47. Looked like Taylor Upshaw was offside. Offside. Defense, number 91, the penalty has declined. The result of the play is a first down. And it almost looked like some guys on both teams kind of gave up, like was the whistle going to blow or not? It was clearly offsides by Upshaw. And credit Max Duggan for not giving up on the play. It was only a four-man rush, and he easily got the first down with the scramble up the middle. This is where you might see them take a shot down the field to Quentin Johnston. They tried earlier in the game, and Duggan got hurt as he threw it. He's up here at the top, number one. Nice pocket given by this veteran offensive line. Open receiver and a catch for a first down. Out of bounds goes Jordan Hudson, a true freshman, after just his 13th catch of the year, good for 21. Well, Max Duggan realizes this is only a three-man rush, so I can wait. I can allow this thing to develop. And he goes all the way across the field, started reading left first. They go quickly, they get it out to Quentin Johnston. He's tackled immediately by Mike Sainristil, the emotional leader of that defense. Now in the secondary after three seasons at wide receiver. We talked to Garrett Riley, he said, what we want to do is we want to make them play at a pace and a tempo they're not used to and not comfortable with. But you got to make first downs to do that. We're doing that on this drive. Riley is the offensive coordinator for TCU. Here's Deemer Cottle up the middle and down just short of the first down. It's an excellent offensive line for TCU. Their best is Steve Avila, the left guard, consensus All-American. They're over the ball quickly for third and a short two. Play fake. Darius Davis down the 11-yard line with a first down. Missed tackle by Rod Moore, but it was a quick tempo also. Michigan lucky to get all their players off the field. Went with a quick snap, quick throw to Davis, and there's the missed tackle by Rod Moore. And for both of these teams, tackling in space at a premium in this ball game. Michigan has been excellent in the red zone on defense all year. Only 11 touchdowns allowed in the red zone. They've been excellent in just about every facet of defense. In the flat, it's caught. Tate Barber taken out of bounds near the five by Sainra still. There are the numbers Todd was referencing.
Michigan trying to sub a lot of people. They want to play a lot of people to offset this tempo and the pace that TCU plays with. TCU's got them on their heels a little bit here right now. Second and four from the five. Duggan run area. Duggan keeps it. Duggan! Stopped right around the line to gain. Looks like they're going to spot him just short. When Mike Morris was in the backfield and tackled the back immediately and almost blew that play up in the backfield. Watch number 90. Whoa. Tackled Di Mercado. Almost knocked the ball out, but Duggan, this is inside the 10 yard line. This is where TCU likes to keep the ball in Max Duggan's hands. Other than the last two plays of the Big 12 championship. Yeah, they game, didn't get it to him in overtime and they regretted it. They got stuffed twice by Kansas State. And they it's punch it in here. Yeah, that's what they should have done they get in the Arlington. Down. They got a push from Jacoria Spivey and got just enough for the first down. First and goal from the one. It's one of the many reasons we both like Sonny Dykes. You know, they got down there, first possession overtime in a tie game. Third down and very short. Fourth down and very short. Both times Kendra Miller. Right. And after the game, when he was asked, why didn't you give it to Doug and he got you down there? He said, well, we had it to do over again. We would do it differently. Yeah. A lot of coaches would just defend it. He said, yep, probably wasn't the right thing to do. Here's the 12th play of his drive, trying to take a two-touchdown lead. With two and a half to go in the first quarter. Quentin Johnston, the motion man. Here's Duggan. Touchdown, TCU! Reversal, at least so far. Michigan, usually a fast starting team, while TCU has come from behind all year. Extra point good by Griffin Kell. Sonny Dykes, it'd be nice if we got off to a good start. They have. Absolutely. Duggan following his tight end, Jared Wiley, showing that power and toughness. TCU up by 14. Back in the Valley of the Sun, the roof closed on a 65 degree day in Glendale, Arizona. Bright sunny day so far for TCU. Leading 14 to nothing. Wow. <laughs> Very surprising. This team though, you know, it's, it's almost like they've been playing with house money all year, right? They were five and seven a year ago. New coaching staff, new scheme on offense and defense. Picked to finish seventh in the Big 12. They started winning games. They got more confident. They started believing in themselves. And we did the Oklahoma State game. When they won that and came back, they knew they had something special. But they played loose all year. Another thing we've learned this year after the touchback here, here comes the replay. Max Duggan is a bleeder. Yeah. Watch this now. As this tight end releases out, it's going to affect these two defenders. Now watch when they bring the receiver in motion. This is going to affect these two defenders with the motion, and Duggan is going to have a big hole to run in there behind his tight end, Jared Wiley. And that was just well executed, and it fooled the Michigan defense on the goal line. His 26th career rushing touchdown, eighth all-time at TCU, tied with Kendry Miller, his teammate. So Michigan facing its biggest deficit of the season. And that plays in trouble and drop for a loss. A.J. Henning dumped by D. Winters. D. Winters is all over the place so far tonight. Here he is right here. This is a run blitz. All right, they're anticipating run. He's going to fire through the gap. They're not able to pick him up with the guard center. And it's a negative yardage play on first down. And Joe Gillespie said, we have to play well on early downs and put them in uncomfortable situations. What a start by D. Winters. He has been all over the field. Only a three-man rush. Nice pocket. McCarthy on target. Big play for Michigan. Luke Schoonmaker. 
dragged down in TCU territory by Millard Bradford. It's a play of 32. Well, we saw Max Duggan be down, patient first on the three down rush. This time, same thing for McCarthy. He knew he had protection. He finds Schoonmaker, one of his big tight end targets, and patiently waits till he clears and hits him for a big time first down. They have a terrific tight end group, and that's even while losing Eric All early in the year to a knee injury. He wound up transferring to Iowa. Schoonmaker was helped off. Donovan Edwards ahead for three. Meanwhile, Roman Wilson has come back from the locker room and returned to the game for Michigan. So they're making sure that Schoonmaker's okay. He's battled injuries all season. You know, when Eric All got hurt, Schoonmaker had to step up. Then he started having some problems, and Colston Loveland, the freshman, stepped up. But with the combination of Loveland and Schoonmaker, that's when they're at their best right now. Very few people had even heard of Loveland or right. Will Johnson on defense when the season began. A couple of true freshmen become key players in the second half. McCarthy all day to throw, and it finds Loveland through traffic. There's a flag down in the secondary. If the play stands, it's first down Michigan at the 29. Well, again, TCU choosing not to bring pressure. It's just a three-man rush. I'm not sure how he got that Holding ball in there. Defense, number one. The penalty has declined. The result of the play is a first down. Why do you see the window that J.J. McCarthy threw this one through? The holding is on Tomlinson, the Thorpe Award winner, working on Cornelius Johnson. But watch this window. There's three defenders right in the area, and the ball just slips right between them to Colston Loveland. Loveland's caught a touchdown pass in each of those two big wins against Ohio State and Purdue. Edwards tried to turn the corner, and again, a good tackle. This one by Namdi Obiezor. Well, for those of you that are going to stick around and watch that game tonight, you're going to see a tight end for Georgia. Brock Bowers is one of the best players in college football. He's very versatile, great ball skills, great with the ball in his hands. And I think this Colston Loveland is becoming like him. Michigan is using him in similar ways. That's the end of the first quarter. Timeout. Michigan down 14 to nothing, but on the move. As we head to the second quarter, in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, it's the start of the college football playoff. Quarter here in Glendale at the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, college football playoff semifinal. 14 nothing TCU after a quarter. Biggest deficit prior to today, Todd, that Michigan had faced seven points very early, 10 to three in their win at Ohio State. We did the game when they got the last second field goal to beat yep. Illinois. I think it's critical that they score on this possession. I mean, they have 127 yards in the first quarter and no points to show for it because of that fourth down stop. Good drive here. They've got to pull within seven. Sixth play of the drive. They've gone 51 yards so far. They do not add to that total. And that carry by Donovan Edwards, the sophomore from West Bloomfield, Michigan. Dylan Horton in on the play with Dominic Williams. There's Williams. Man. You said he had to be big. He'll be big even if he doesn't make a lot of plays. Yep. At 320. He was 17 years old when they started their first game at Colorado. Just turned 18 in September, but he is a full grown man, even though he's not very old. Third down and four. They're crowding the line of scrimmage, and they drop Edwards for a loss. It's Winters again. Having the game of his career and the biggest game of his career. Yeah, I mean, here he is right here. Now he's going to go out with motion and then he's going to come back in. As soon as that tight end clears, he's hitting the gap. And they're not accounting for him on the run blitz. Negative yardage plays. D. Winter really playing well. There's Jake Modi. A great kicker. Best in. Michigan history, the only Wolverine to win the Lou Groves Award is the best kicker in the country. He did that last year. And he was a finalist this year. And he's good from 42. Adding to his school record. This is his 67th career field goal. One of the big questions coming in, could TCU's defense 
hold up to this physical offensive line in the run game of Michigan. The first play of the game, Michigan gashed them for a long run. But since that time, they have done a great job on the fourth down trick play by Michigan. It was totally snuffed out by Josh Newton. Pressure on Colston Loveland, they come up short. And the interception by Bud Clark, an early down man coverage situation. He breaks on the football and turns that pick into a pick six. And then D. Winters just a moment ago, who's having a heck of a first half so far, slashing and dashing through this defense with a big play behind the line of scrimmage. How about the story he told us earlier there from Brenham, Texas? And he didn't know anything about TCU. He said he was playing middle school football. One of his teammates gave him purple TCU right. gloves. He wore them, liked them, went home, Googled TCU, and decided then, as a middle schooler, I'm going to play football at TCU. And it's interesting because Joe Gillespie recruited him at Tulsa, loved the kid, and now he gets to coach him at TCU. Darius Davis, very dangerous return man, taken down shy of the 30-yard line. Coming up next, the second half of the college football playoff semifinal from the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Number one, Georgia, the defending national champs against fourth-ranked Ohio State. And the playoff and season conclude a week from Monday in Los Angeles with the national championship game, 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN and ESPN Radio. In a lot of other places. Max Duggan with five wide receivers to start this possession. He's completed his last four. And it's not five, in fact, it's intercepted on the deflection, taken in by Rod Moore. Yeah, that was a middle linebacker, Junior Colson who's able to knock the ball up in the air. He's in coverage on Tay Barber, the slot receiver, in perfect position. Watch 25, break on the football, get it up in the air, and now a turnover for Michigan, and we'll see if they can capitalize. Beautiful play by the linebacker, Colson. So two of the best quarterbacks in the country at not throwing interceptions, each has thrown one. Sonny Dykes wanted a pass interference. I think he was making the play on the ball. There was contact, but if he's making a play on the ball like Colson was, that's not a penalty. Team high fourth pick for Moore, sophomore from Clayton, Ohio. Michigan's got to get Ronnie Bell involved in the game. He's too big of a piece of the puzzle here. Play fake. They want to go deep after the takeaway, and they do go deep. Roman Wilson! Touchdown, Michigan! First down, heavy personnel, two tight ends, they go play action. And this middle safety, Millard Bradford, got caught looking in the backfield Rule and was not able video to help Time out on Bud Clark. Bud Clark had the interception for a touchdown. That time he got beat by Roman Wilson. And the safety, Millard Bradford, wasn't there to help him. They're going to check to make sure it was a touchdown. Or did he go down just shy of the goal line? I think by the time he had yes, possession. by the time he had possession, I think he was in the end zone. I don't think he had it when he first went down. Look at it from the AT&T 5G pylon cam. One of the fastest Wolverines, the junior from Honolulu, Roman Wilson. Actually went to the locker room in the first quarter. Let's bring in our referee, Matt Austin. Matt, what do you think as they take a look at this in the replay booth with David Allman? Well, from what I've seen, Sean, I agree with you and Todd. I, I think the ball kind of bounced off his hands first, and by the time he fully That's secured it, he review. was in the end zone. Rolling is a catch, but the runner was down a half yard short of the goal line. It'll be first down, Michigan. Well, wow, I'm surprised. I, I thought I thought what Matt said, what you and I said, I thought it was a touchdown. I can guarantee you one thing, though. We're not going to see Philly no trick special. plays. No trick no. plays right here. 
Yep, no trick plays. We might see Kalel Mullings. Their goal line is short yardage back, but we will not see a trick play here. Well, you would expect or heavy personnel and power football. There's Mullings. There's a backup linebacker. Most of the year, when Corn went out late in the year, they put him over on offense. They have a lot of confidence in him. Corum sidelined after knee surgery late in the year. They get quickly over the ball. J.J. McCarthy handed it to Mullings. There's a flag down, and the ball is out. TCU thinks they have it. A lot going on as they unpile. It is TCU ball. The ball was lost by the offense, recovered by the defense in the end zone. Touchdown. It looked like there was a flag down. Yeah, I think maybe they were reaching for a beanbag instead of a flag. This is a quick handoff because the fullback is close to the quarterback. See how close the fullback is to the quarterback, and it was never a clean exchange between Mullings and McCarthy, and the ball is out immediately. And you're right, Todd. I think the official threw a flag intending to throw the beanbag. Beanbag to mark the spot where the fumble came out. And you heard the referee, Jason Autry, announce there is no penalty. What another play by this TCU defense. In the red zone, down by the goal line, they get the stop. Well, they were happy when we talked to Sharon Moore yesterday and Matt Weiss, the coordinators, with the job Mullings has done. But he's not an experienced ball carrier, nine carries all season. The Michigan team that's avoided turnovers all season long has handed it over twice. Kendra Miller capitalizes. Rod Moore knocked him out of bounds, but it's another big gainer for TCU. And you go back to the replay review that they'll be talking about for a long time. David Allman decided that he was down with possession of the ball. Before the goal line, I don't think you and I agree. Matt Austin certainly did not. Well, we talked about Dominic Williams in the middle of that defense. That time he made the play in causing that fumble. He knocked Oluwatimi, the great center, back. The draw, and Kendra Miller is thrown down by DJ Turner. After the 13-yard gain, he got six on that play. Very uncharacteristic problems for Michigan today with the turnovers. They've been a team that has really taken care of the football, played very efficiently, but they've been their own undoing today. When you talk to defensive coaches, they consider a stop on fourth down a oh, takeaway, yeah. even though oh, the yeah. NCAA stats do not. But they have turned it over twice, Michigan. They had seven turnovers all year. Duggan going deep, and it's incomplete. The Horn Frog sideline thought Darius Davis was being held. DJ Turner happy not to see a flag. Well, they both had their hands on each other. I think that's a good no call. I mean, you got offense pushing, you got defense pushing. I don't know how you call either one on that. AT&T 5G ref cam. We got every kind of camera today, don't we? We do. Cameras on hats. Pylons. It's Christmas Day for our director Scott Johnson and our producer Josh Hoffman, our great crew. Third down and four, a Michigan blitz. Dug in, incomplete. Over the middle, trying to hit Savion Williams, who got hit by Junior Colson as the ball arrived. It's the first time we've seen Michigan really sell out and go after Max Duggan. He read it, knew he had to get rid of the ball quickly, but good pressure and a good hit on the football and forced the punt. A.J. Henning back for the punt from the Australian Jordy Sandy, 29 years old, fourth oldest player in college football. And that's a rocket. That might be all the way back to Melbourne. Here's Henning. And a flag thrown on the return as A.J. got taken down at the 26-yard line. 51-yard punt by Sandy in his fourth year. 
as their starting punter. There is no foul on the play. The result is first down. Timeout. Well, they were ever so close to a touchdown. Instead, it wound up as a turnover. Taco Bell, the college football playoff, bringing the best of the regular season to the college football playoff by creating the Live Moss student section at these venues. Taco Bell's provided tickets for students from schools participating in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl and the national championship game so the most passionate fans can cheer on their teams. And both schools very well represented. Donovan Edwards. The ball carry for about three for TCU small private school in Fort Worth. Beautiful campus. 12,200 the total enrollment. Of course, Michigan more than 51,000. Two great academic yep. institutions. And the stadiums are a lot different. TCU small but magnificent. Yep. Recently renovated. And of course, the big house, one of the iconic venues in the world for sports. J.J. McCarthy on second and seven on target to Edwards. And he has a first down. Josh Newton chopped him down. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, Michigan's miscues not affecting J.J. McCarthy's confidence. He gathered his offense together saying, we're good. They're not stopping us. We're stopping ourselves. Michigan coaches said one of his best attributes is his poise under pressure. And he's been calming teammates down on the sidelines saying, stick to our smash identity and we can get out of this. Sean. Yeah, Sonny, Sonny Dyke said about this team, they're probably the most patient in terms of sticking with the run. They're not going to abandon who they are or what they do, even if they're behind on the scoreboard like they are right now. That's who Michigan is. And that also sets up their play action passing, which is where they're most effective. Well, Molly <laughs> talks about J.J. staying calm. He certainly yeah. was before the game, and this is his pregame routine. Come out up against the goal post and meditate. Will be leaning on that inner piece facing this deficit. Edwards dropped for a loss. And it'll be third down and four. Could TCU hold up up front against this tremendous big strong offensive line? So far they have. Yeah, and again, these back five secondary players are the guys that fill the gaps. Millard Bradford got back in there. D. Winters, who's been all over the place. The guys up front hold the point, and the fast guys come up to make the tackles. Four tackles for a loss already for the Horn Frogs. Nine and a half to go till halftime. 14 to three, TCU. McCarthy, short throw off target, and it could not be rescued by Ronnie Bell. Yeah, he right had along Bell. the line to game. He had Bell. Bell knew exactly where the first down marker was and got to that point. But it was not a good throw by J.J. McCarthy. Watch, Bell is sitting down. Hit him right in the middle of the numbers, and McCarthy threw it too wide. Earlier in the year, when we did Michigan's game against Michigan State, J.J. McCarthy was 77% completions for the year, leading the country. Yeah. That's still very good for the year at 65, but obviously... There are a lot of incompletions to bring it down by 12 percentage points. 65.3% entering today with tied Todd Collins in 1992 for the best completion percentage in a season in Michigan history. Darius Davis, the fair catch of the Brad Robbins punt. You're watching the Verbo Fiesta Bowl from Glendale. Football playoff semifinal at the Verbo Fiesta Bowl is brought to you by Taco Bell. Taco Bell is giving back to students all postseason long by giving them free tickets to the biggest bowl games of the year. Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Mercedes-Benz and Gatorade. Head to Gatorade.com for exclusives to help you fuel your 2023 goals. ESPN is proud to support the CFP Foundation and its Extra Yard for Teachers initiative by recognizing thousands of great teachers every year. Together, they're doing more to uplift the teaching profession than any other sports entity in the country. 
For more about extra yard for teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Great teachers change lives. We thank them for doing so. Michigan defensively, Sean, is doing a really good job of limiting the big plays of this TCU offense. That's what they have made their money on all year. Even though they have a 14-3 lead, one of those touchdowns was by the defense. Michigan crowding the line. Kendry Miller patiently trying to find anywhere to go, and he flopped ahead to the 20-yard line. Jesse Minter is the first-year defensive coordinator for Jim Harbaugh. One of the five finalists for the Royals Award as the top assistant coach of the year. Why not? Now they lost some star players off of last year's defense when he was with the Baltimore Ravens. But they're among the leaders in the country in just about every important statistical category. Play fake by Duggan. Steps into the throw and fires a bullet. It's Jordan Hudson again. For a first down to the 33-yard line, a gain of 13. We'll play action pass. Good protection. And Duggan does a nice job of just throwing it right through the arms of an on-rushing defensive lineman. I'll tell you what, this guy will hang in the pocket and make throws under major duress. He is a fearless competitor. And hang with the program. A three-year yep. starter, lost his job at the beginning of the year. A lot of guys would have dove into chance for a portal he told the coaches I'll be the best backup quarterback in the catcher he throws deep and off target trying to get Tate Barber to run under it Jalen Harrell brought some pressure Max Duggan he's been through a lot including a nine hour heart procedure ablation and he just keeps dusting himself off and getting up and they'll go long stretches, he in particular, but the offense where they look awful. And then they find a way to have it kick in. And it usually kicks in by big plays. I mean, they just kill people with explosive plays. 19 plays this year, 50 yards or more, most in the country. Duggan stopped short of the first down by a couple of yards. Jamon Green, who was a starting cornerback, and he got roughed up in that tunnel incident with Michigan State. He suffered a concussion. They put Will Johnson into the starting lineup, and Johnson stayed in there with his great play. But Green still an important extra DB. Well, right now they have all three corners in because of the wide receiving skill of TCU. You've got Green, Turner, and Will Johnson in on this third down play. Halfway through the second quarter. Game is settled in a bit. Duggan, look. Both sides didn't find anybody, so he does what he does. And has a first down. They'll mark him down at his own 49-yard line. He ran away from the pressure of Mozzie Smith. Well, Mozzie Smith slipped a little bit, but I think he also thought a screen pass was coming because it looks like he's trying to change directions. Instead of going right after the quarterback, he slipped, and Duggan saw it and got outside for the first down. It's a grass field. And we've seen in games here in the past where players have had difficulty with the field condition. A lot of slipping and falling. I really think Mozzie Smith thought it was a screen because nobody blocked him. And normally when you let defensive linemen rush, it's a screen coming. Quentin oh Johnston is all alone. Caught it at the 30 and spins down at the 20. And slams the turf. You wonder after that spin move, which is a big part of his arsenal. He slipped down. It's a corner blitz, but the safety was not on the same page with the corner. The corner came, and the safety was going back to the middle of the field, and Max Duggan saw it. Quarterback draw, and a big tackle made by Jalen Harrell, or that might have gone into the end zone. If you're going to blitz the corner, then this safety needs to come this way. Watch the safety go the other way, and Max Duggan sees it immediately and gets the ball to his number one guy. Yeah, he slipped. Again, another player slipping on the fielder. That might have gone the distance. Second and six. Trying to take a commanding lead here in the second quarter. And Miller just could not break free from Macari Page, where that would have been another touchdown, and now Miller limps off, but he did pick up a first down. Uh, 
New set of downs inside the 10 yard line. And this has been a sweet spot for the Michigan defense all season, but they have not played a lot of offenses like TCU's. I mean, the best two offenses they played prior to this were their last two games, Ohio State and Purdue. Well, it would be a huge development if Miller cannot return. Particularly like to have him down around the goal line. He scored 17 rushing touchdowns. They're a little off in their communication on that play. Savion Williams not connected with Duggan. Here's the end of the play. Let's see if we can determine yet. Yeah, looked like his right ankle that stuck under the body of Page. This is a guy who scored a rushing touchdown in every game of the season for TCU. Well, remember now, inside the 10 yard line, a lot of Max Duggan designed quarterback runs. We saw it in the last possession when he scored. De Mercado, the running back. He stays in to pick up a blitz. Duggan got hit, still got it off. Tay Barber! Touchdown, Horn Frogs! What a play. What a play. McGregor and Sainra still are going to blitz, and Barber's crossing, but watch Duggan. He knows he can't block them all. He's just got to get back far enough to give himself time to let the speedy Barber clear. What a heads-up play by Max Duggan, giving ground and then making the accurate throw. The extra point good by Griffin Kell. Tay Barber. His fifth touchdown of his senior season. Once again, as it's been all year, Max Duggan a big part in making it happen. If they could come back to win, it would be the biggest deficit overcome in the nine-year history of the CFP. There have been significant comebacks over the previous eight years, including Georgia from 17 down in that terrific game at the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma. Henry Miller on the bike. He came out late in that touchdown drive, a six-yard touchdown pass. Duggan to Barber. Luke Laminac kicks off. Freshman from Amarillo. It'll be a touchback. Speaking of the Rose Bowl, Monday, January 2nd on ESPN, starts with the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. What a year for Tulane in USC, two of the most improved teams in the country over a year ago. Then the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential number eight, Utah champions, the Pac-12 against Penn State. Number 11, Monday Night Football, right after the Rose Bowl game. Caps week 17, what a matchup. Oh, Buffalo boy. and Cincinnati at 8.15, right after Monday Night Countdown. Donovan Edwards, not much, a half yard perhaps. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, earlier this game, Michigan tight end Luke Schoonmaker was in the medical tent with an apparent right shoulder injury. I can't find him anywhere on the sideline. I'm told he's being evaluated in the locker room, but could return in the second half. That would be a huge loss. He's their second leading receiver. You know, we've got several Michigan games, Todd, and to me, the one thing that they're lacking is really the big playmakers at the wide receiver position. Yeah, they're not elite at that position. Nothing like Ohio State, not even like this TCU team. J.J. McCarthy fires on target. But they do have talented tight ends, and even without Schoonmaker, here's Colston Loveland for 14 yards. He's from Gooding, Idaho. Jim Harbaugh went out to Idaho to recruit him, small town. And Jim being Jim, there's all kinds of stories about Jim. When he got to the high school, Loveland was working out, so Jim jumped in, sure. got in some reps on the bench press in his street clothes. Well, they knew he had elite receiving skills. The biggest surprise was how tough and physical he was in the run blocking aspect of being a tight end. Edwards trying to bounce it outside. Battle of speed here. And Edwards had enough of it to turn it into a gain to the 46, shoved out by Bud Clark. He's emerged as a star in the second half of this magical season for TCU. Here's Tiffany. 
So I just want, guys, I wanted to give you an update on running back Kendra Miller. It appears he has injured his right knee. I watched him get on the bike and step off of it. He's grimacing in pain, but he keeps telling his teammates and members of the athletic staff that he's good. Max Duggan talked to all of us for a long time yesterday about how important he is. McCarthy got blasted as he throws it up for grabs. Jump ball. Wilson tries to come back to it and cannot make the catch. I think there's going to be a roughing the passer, though, on Johnny Hodges. McCarthy had to leave the pocket immediately, and this could bail him out on this play if it is a personal foul. No way McCarthy could get enough on that throw. Wilson was down near the goal line, and he just launched it, trying to get rid of it. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Mm. Defense in the 57. 15-yard penalty includes an automatic first down. First TCU penalty against the Navy transfer. Oh, boy. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, he's not late. He doesn't look like he goes to the head. It just looks like it's a push in the chest to me. I, I don't think there's a lot there. At first, he's got the left hand up just to try to get in the way of the throwing lane. And you're right, man. It's not, not a lot there. I mean, in the NFL, maybe. But in college football, I don't know. Do they still let you hit the quarterback? Yeah, big break it seems there for Michigan. They could use one. Here's A.J. Henning. Of course, they got a horrible overturn of what looked to be a touchdown in replay earlier. Henning knocked down by Abe Kamara. You know, Sonny Dykes, you talked to him, and people have heard him interviewed many times, including on Game Day Tech. Mild-mannered, affable, easygoing Texan until the game starts. <laughs> you know, he started out as a baseball coach. He didn't follow his dad into football coaching. And he kind of argues like a baseball manager. Yeah, he does. He does. I'll tell you the thing that that I'm seeing out of this TCU Ball team. Start. Offense. Everybody move with the center. Five-yard penalty. Second down. We knew they were built on speed on both sides of the ball, but they look even faster and bouncier in this game on offense and defense. And I think a big part of that is. You know, they played 11 weeks in a row. They had a week off September 17th, and they played 11 straight weeks. So this last four weeks or so after the championship game has been huge for them. And those were hard weeks yep. as we chronicled. You know, so many close games and all the meaningful once they got themselves into the national picture at midseason. McCarthy under duress. Swung down back in midfield. Dylan Horton leading the way. Well, first of all, it was the blitzing linebacker, Johnny Hodges, who got called for the penalty. He's going to come untouched right into the pocket, and then Dylan Horton's going to finish off the play. There's Hodges, there's Horton, and nowhere to go for J.J. McCarthy. Mentioned Hodges transferred from Navy, went there to be a lacrosse player. Went over to ask the football team if he could try out. He did. He was a good player. But he wanted to transfer out. Nobody but TCU had interest. McCarthy all day has a man. Off target throw. And Travis Hodges Tomlinson got a hand on it as it was thrown in the direction of Loveland, who had a little space. Actually, I don't think, I think the throw was pretty good. It was just a tremendous play by Hodges Tomlinson. He was able to get a hand in there and deflect it, covering Colston Loveland. Watch number one, the Thorpe Award corner against the bigger tight end, and gets in there and knocks the ball away with his right hand. Javius is the nephew of the great Ladanian Tomlinson. Great TCU players of all time. They're very close. Dan's like a dad to him. Robbins the punt. Fair catch by Darius Davis. We're getting close to halftime. 133 to go and an 18-point lead for the Horn Frogs. Provided by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. We're ready for the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. 
Reese Davis, David Pollock, Desmond Howard standing by with the Mercedes Benz halftime report. We'll see how TCU plays it. 1.33 to go. With an 18 point lead, it's starting from their own 15. Michigan attacking the line. De Mercado out to the 31. And now you'd have to think they'll go into aggressive mode, as is their style. Yeah, that first first down in a situation like this is, is critical. And they know they have the Big Ten champs on the ropes. I think you still play it smart here because you've got the game in hand. You've got Michigan in a position they're not used to being in, and you get the ball first to start the third quarter. The worst thing you can do is make a big mistake here at this point in the game. Back-to-back -back carries for DeMarcado, still without Miller, who left the game with a leg injury. Jump ball, no chance. Out of bounds in the direction of Quentin Johnston. Perfect coverage by D.J. Turner. I mean, he was stride for stride. There was nowhere to throw the football anywhere near Johnson. We have two very good kickers. Each of these teams blessed with an outstanding kicker. So even if they can move it a little bit, they might get into range for Griffin Kells. Career long is 54. Play clock running down. The game clock not moving. 57 seconds in the half. Michigan has been a dominant second half team, but they'll have a lot of work to do. Duggan gets splattered back inside the 30 by Makari Page, and now it's Jim Harbaugh who'll use the timeout. Yeah, Duggan wanted to throw this quick, but he didn't see anything open. It looked like Tay Michigan Barber was the intended receiver. Makari Page came on a blitz, seconds. and I'm not sure what the running back, Dean McCardo, was looking for because he didn't pick up anybody. He just stood there mm -hmm. and allowed his quarterback to get hit. Ole. Yeah. He's yeah. a smart guy. Yeah. Mercado graduated undergrad with a GPA of 3.744, and he already has a master's degree. I didn't read the blitz on that one. No. Well. Too much time studying the books, not the pass pro. Jordan Sandy high short kick fair catch made by A.J. Henning. A little bit of time 47 seconds and a timeout for Michigan back in 10 seconds after a message from Verbo. It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo. Where you have the run of the entire place. And they're nice places. I mean Tim yeah. always stays in nice places. You think. Vacation rental by owner, if you're wondering what Verbo stands for. Last time they did not score a touchdown within the first seven drives was their semifinal loss to Georgia last year, the Orange Bowl. Pass broken up by Hodges Tomlinson. If he joined us late, Michigan went right down the field on the opening possession of the game for either team. Had Fourth and goal at the two, ran a trick play. It got stopped. They thought they had scored a touchdown on the long pass to Roman Wilson. Replay ruled it down just shy of the goal line, and they turned it over on a fumble going in. J.J. should have just kept run that play. That was a tough throw against Hodges Tomlinson. Only a three-man rush. They're playing coverage. Low throw and a catch by Cornelius Johnson. Michigan has one timeout. The clock stops till they move the chain. They may spike it or call play quickly, but they've got to go fast. Video review timeout. We're going to take a look at. You know, some people might be asking. Now this is different because it's a two-minute drill. As we take a look at the replay, if this was a catch or not. Look to be from that angle. Hands under the ball. Some people might ask, you know, does Michigan need to abandon the run? Do they need to get more wide open throwing? They can't for a couple reasons. Number one, that's who they are, and, and their best players and their best plays are running the football in their offensive line. Number two, they're not built to just drop back and throw it, and we already talked about the receivers. They don't have an elite receiving core that's going to beat you play after play. It's a catch for a first down. 
So they have to hope that they can keep the score somewhat manageable and be able to continue to do what they do. They had 10 yards rushing at the half against Ohio State. Right. And then they dominated the second half. Right. And it opens up long runs. We saw two very long touchdown runs by Donovan Edwards in the final seven and a half minutes of that game in Columbus to put it away. He had 75 and 69 yard runs. A big part of their approach is to wear you down. McCarthy, again, only a three man rush and nobody open. Now the ball's out and it bounces out of bounds. Dylan Horton, who's had a very active first half. Dylan Horton is an impressive athlete. 38 inch vertical jump, 455 speed. You see the speed closing on the quarterback. For a big man at 6'4", 275. Transfer from New Mexico. He's on his way to the Senior Bowl. Michigan came into today's game with seven turnovers lost all season. Only USC at fewer six. They've been sloppy with the ball today. That's all you can do. Check down to Loveland, and we'll see if Jim Harbaugh is going to use the timeout. He will. Three plays in a row. It's just been kind of a prevent defense. Three man rush, Michigan and there's just nowhere to throw the football. Out of the half. You, well, you don't see the 3 3 5 somewhere. defense nope. if you're Michigan, and it can cause a lot of confusion. We're going to go back earlier in this quarter to the interception. Now, make note Makari Page looked like he intercepted it at the TCU 49, but they marked it two yards further back. And then you'll recall if you're watching this is the next play. They thought they had a touchdown it was ruled just short. You know who knows if the same exact thing would have happened but if they're two yards closer that's a touchdown. Yeah. Fifteen seconds. No timeout. They'll have to get a play out of bounds or a stop the clock to move the chains and spike it, and they might not get a chance for any of that. Desperately waving people around, now launching it up for grabs and batted away in the flag. With five seconds to go, Travius Hodges Tomlinson involved in the coverage on Cornelius Johnson. Well, the good news for TCU is this is not the NFL rule, so it's not going to put the ball inside the five. Yeah, no question. Yeah. He hits him right in the chest. Pass interference, defense number one. And credit. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. Take a look at the replay, AT&T 5G ref cam, and just credit J.J. McCarthy for getting the ball that far down the field to give his guy a chance. And now the question becomes for Jim Harbaugh, do you try a field goal and they're going to try it. Jake Moody's long this season is 54. He's just two for six from beyond 50 yards. But as we mentioned, a great kicker. And Jim Harbaugh said he became a Michigan legend when he made the game winning kick in the final seconds PCU's against Illinois. That kick didn't count. It's 30 seconds in length. The 54 yarder against Michigan State is also his career long, so this would best that by five yards. And if you're Jim Harbaugh and you saw that attempt, you wonder maybe you try the Hail Mary. This season, all state will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, all state. You know what? I would also take a look. This was the, the game winner. We got to be there and see. It was true. He was four for four on field goals in the game. 17 seconds, 35 yard game winner when they were on the ropes against the gritty Illinois team. They leave Moody out there. You know, if I Mark Tomerdahl, the special teams coach for TCU, and I saw that attempt, I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to go after this. That was a very low trajectory kick. Would you put somebody back to return it? Yep. It's a line drive. Looks like he has plenty of leg. 
big. Wow. And the legend grows off the foot of Jake Moody. Career long 59 yarder. And that is the school record. The previous long by a Wolverine was 57. He's set every record you can set as a field goal kicker at the University of Michigan. So perhaps a little momentum, but no touchdowns in that first half for Michigan. Here's Tiffany Blackman. Defense has been so effective in the first half. How have they been able to do that? Well, we've done a good job in the red zone. You know, they've gotten inside the five-yard line twice and held them to zero points. So, you know, we're going to have to get a little bit more going offensively, do a better job of, of taking advantage of some of the stops our defense are providing. But the guys are playing hard right now. We've taken away the run game for the most part, gave up a big run early. But, you know, we just got to keep settled, get settled in and play the second half. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. <laughs> he can be animated and he can be calm. <laughs> and he is a tremendous football coach. But he knows the history. Of course, his team has had all those comebacks. They're unaccustomed to being ahead like this. But Michigan's second half scoring margin of plus 206 this season is the best by any team in the country in the nine years of the CFP. They're down 15. Send you to the studio for the Mercedes-Benz halftime report after these messages. Fiesta Bowl from Glendale, Arizona, just west of downtown Phoenix in the beautiful Valley of the Sun. At the half in our first college football semifinal of the day, number three TCU leads number two in undefeated Michigan. 21 to six, here's today's Capital One rewarding performance. Well, it's got to start with the TCU defense. I mean, they have forced two turnovers off of a team that only had seven coming into this ball game. One of them returned for a touchdown by Bud Clark and then Max Duggan, the leader, doesn't have a lot of great numbers throwing the football, but you've seen his grit and his toughness. This touchdown pass to Tay Barber crossing the field gave him the lead. And uh, TCU, Sean, is winning in the critical areas of this game. They're plus one in the turnover margin. They're better in the red zone. And they're better on third down. I mean, the average yards needed for Michigan on third down is 7.7 .7 yards. That means TCU has played good on early down defense, exactly what Joe Gillespie, Gillespie said they needed to do. They've been better on third, they've been better in the red zone, they've been better in turnovers. And we know we chronicled it heading to the half. Michigan is a very good yeah. second half team. They'll have to lean on that again here, obviously, with this big deficit. And their defense has to start first because TCU won the toss initially, deferred, so they'll get the ball here to start the third quarter. To pay attention to Darius Davis, one of the best return men in the country, no chance as that's blasted out of the back of the end zone by Jake Moody. A moment ago, Molly McGrath with Jim Harbaugh. Coach, down 21-6, what do you change in the second half? Well, the things we talked about was getting the rhythm back. Getting the rhythm back and uh, playing our game. We spotted them some points. That makes us mad that we've uh, not ended these drives, the turnovers and two blown coverages. But uh, we're going to go back to work. I know everybody's on the same page. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. J.J. McCarthy was 10 out of 16. He threw a pick six to Bud Clark for the first score of the game. Max Duggan, seven for 16. Todd mentioned they weren't great numbers, but he made big plays when he had to, as he's done throughout the year. Takes off on a quarterback draw. Max Duggan taken down after a 14-yard run. Rod Moore made the tackle. First time we've seen the quarterback draw totally by design. You see the center. Alana Lee, number 56, out leading that play. And again, another great first down play for How about TCU. This formation. <laughs> they had four in the line. That's Kendra Miller who shifts back onto the hip of Duggan. He left the game with an apparent late first half leg injury. Gets a yard there. And let's get more from Tiffany Blackman. Hey guys, Kendra does have a right knee injury. Got some work done in the locker room. He's got that full sleeve on now on that knee. He's trying to give it a go, guys, but we'll see if he can stay in this game. Sean? All right, Tiffany, thank you. They have depth at running back, but Kendra Miller is a special player. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's drop off. Five-man rush, they brought a blitz, and the pass behind Miller, who really wasn't moving. 
very well to try to catch that pass. Junior Colson, the linebacker, was blitzing from Duggan's left. Colson is so explosive. I mean, they think his NFL ceiling is maybe the highest of anybody on this team. He's got great speed at first. 6'3, 235 pounds. He's got to come out for a play because his helmet come off at the end of the play. Miller kind of jogged off and didn't look like he's moving well. Mari DiMercato comes in. They're showing blitz again. They bring it. And he got hit. They dug in, and the pass is incomplete. Tennifer Hudson, Javon Green broke it up. Rod Moore, the blitzer this time, who put the hit on Duggan. Yeah, here comes Moore from the outside. They showed it inside, then dropped out, brought the outside blitz, confused the front of TCU, and then a nice play by Green at the end of the play. So they got him into a third and long. And again, that first half, TCU was four of eight or four of seven on third down. That time they won. You have to like the blitz calls from Jesse Mitter. Jim Harbaugh wants his team to be aggressive. Trying to make a momentum turning play. Here's interference with the opportunity to feel the punt as A.J. Henning was hit. There are flags. Yeah, that's, that's kind of no question. That's going to give pretty good field position to Michigan to start their first possession. They get the three and out by their defense. And now let's see if the offense responds the way Jim Harbaugh Kick wants them to. Kicking team number four. The 15 yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. First down, Michigan. Mandy Obiizor with the contact that draws the flag. Well, bring the ball out to the 33 yard line. About as good a start to the second half as Michigan could have hoped for. Three and out on the defense in good field position for their opening possession. We wondered about Kendra Miller's health for TCU. You wonder about Schoonmaker for Michigan. They give it to Donovan Edwards, and he's dropped for a two-yard loss by Johnny Hodges. Well, these have been two magnificent second-half teams. TCU averaging almost 20 points per game in the second half. Michigan sturdy on defense. They've come from behind five times. They're not in that position today. Michigan has only given up two second half touchdowns in the last eight games. In the last two wins over Purdue and Ohio State in the fourth quarter, only three field goals given up. McCarthy on target. Roman Wilson stayed on his feet after the catch and got a couple more into TCU territory. Nice clean pocket for J.J. this time. Four-man rush. Steps up and hits Wilson. Good to see Wilson back on the field. A little bit hobbled there in the first half. Well, J.J. McCarthy's been a winner at every level. In high school, outside Chicago at Nazareth Academy. Led his team to three state championship games. Won one in 2018, despite the fact that he was playing with pins and a broken thumb. Play fake to Edwards. Deep throw, and it is caught! Ronnie Bell inside the 10. Ronnie Bell had three targets in the first half and no catches. And so right away, you got to get this guy involved. He's your best big play receiver. Strong hands, goes up and high points the ball. And a big play. And once again now, Michigan deep in the red area. They were 0 for 2 in the red zone in the first half. That's something that has to change if they want to get back in this football game. They had been 60 out of 64 in the red zone this season. Failed only four times all year, one of the best in the country. But 0 for 2 in that opening half. Edwards ducks down to the three. It's a 43-yard pass play to Ronnie Bell. There's J.J. McCarthy's dad, Jim McCarthy, his mom, Megan, rocking back and forth. His girlfriend, Katja, to Mrs. McCarthy's left. They are high school sweethearts. We haven't had to sweat it out very often on the way to 13 and 0. Trying to get right back 
in it in the early moments of the second half. Second and goal. Talel Mullings, who fumbled on the goal line in the first half, gets another chance. Got a yard. Last year they had Hassan Haskins to power it in. This year that became Blake Corum. Now the go-to guy isn't as obvious. Well, these defensive linemen for TCU are not the biggest, but they are quick and they are active. And the slants down here by the goal line are just, they're getting penetration and they're busting up the blocking schemes of this talented Michigan offensive line. They've just not been able to get creases inside the five-yard line. McCarthy, quick throw and a drop of the receiver bell by Abe Kamara. He planted him right on the catch. Tell you what, Abe Kamara knew this was coming. Watch Abe Kamara say, we got to get another guy over here. We're going to run the screen. Get the third defender. I'll go make the tackle. Abe Kamara knew that was coming, read it, and made a huge play. And again, on third down, down by the goal line, Michigan yeah. slings it out wide. Well, they can't run it up the middle, and they haven't been able to do anything once they get in that part of the field. Trick Jake play. Moody. It was 59-yard field goal just before the half is the second longest in the history of any bowl game. Only Tony Franklin's made a longer field goal in any bowl game back in 1977, the 62-yarder for Texas A&M against Florida in the Sun Bowl. This one a chip shot from 21. Abe Kamara with the big play. 12-point lead now for the Horn Frogs. Atlanta, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Stetson Bennett leading number one Georgia against Ohio State. And he was kind of the Max Duggan of last year. Yeah. The gritty leader waited a long time to get the opportunity. Willed his team to the national championship. Came back to try to win another. They're the favorite to become the first team to repeat in the nine-year college football playoff era. Kind of interesting also in this college football playoff of the four teams, three led by quarterbacks that were all in New York as Heisman finalists. Of course, the winner, Caleb Williams, plays in a later bowl game. Touchback on the kickoff by Moody. They're trying to figure it out. Still not a touchdown today for Michigan. J.J. McCarthy said, and you might have seen the soundbite on game day this morning, in the lead up to this game, if they, meaning TCU, stay in the 3-3-5, it's going to be smash fest. We'll bring the Big Ten to the Big 12. Well, they've had 74 yards rushing today. And only averaging 3.2 yards per carry. The, the job that TCU has done on early downs against the run has been spectacular. After a couple of fakes, here's Jared Wiley. Transfer from Texas, big tight end at 6'7". High school quarterback in Temple, Texas. Remember, he was the quarterback for Quentin Johnston. They were teammates in high school. How about that 6'7 quarterback throwing to a 6'4 receiver? Can you imagine being like a little sophomore in high school playing defense against those guys? Quentin told us, well, he was also a great kicker, too. He bombed the kickoffs out of the end zone. Here's Dean Mercado, still the running back. Miller not out there. It was kind of reminiscent. We did the game when Blake Corm got hurt against Illinois when yeah. he tried at the beginning of the second half to return and just could not go. That might be what we just saw from Miller. Dean Mercado gets the first down. And uh, Miller doesn't even have a helmet now. Yeah. Well, the, the good news for TCU, again, you've got some depth. But you also got Max Duggan, who at times can be like a running back. I mean, he's going to run like a running back. Good opportunity for a shot play right here after the running for that first down. That man at the top. Max Duggan just has to decide what that safety is doing. Is he going to the middle or coming over? Duggan fires off target. He had Quentin Johnston open. 
And he could not make the catch. Top rated receiver. A first round pick in the opinion of Todd McShay, the best receiver in the next draft. And he will be in the draft. He told us yesterday, he hasn't declared yet, but he's going to. Yeah, that was just a bad throw by Max because it was a beautiful route by Johnston. And he really turned DJ Turner around. He faked inside. Turner went inside. Totally bit on the fake. Max just couldn't get in the football. Second and ten, already eight minutes deep into the third quarter. Under pressure, Duggan just gets rid of it, throws it away. Looking to try to set up a screen to Dee Mercado. The three receiver was in the area. Incomplete pass. Third down. Michigan blitzing. Junior Colson getting in there. Rayshon Benny also. Seems like Michigan is going to be a little bit more aggressive in the second half yep. defensively. Try to get themselves back in the ballgame. Which could leave them exposed down the field if the protection holds up for Max Duggan. Play clock about to run out. Sonny Dykes CCU uses a timeout. Charge time out of the half. Nearly midway through the third quarter. Still a 12-point lead for the Horn Frogs from Fort Worth. Football playoff semifinal at the Verbo Fiesta Bowl is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And DoorDash. There's a neighborhood of good in every order. Michigan's last national championship, the 1997 season. They finished 12-0. With a win over Washington State in the Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl, Charles Woodson won the Heisman. Great performance by Brian Gracie at quarterback. Tom Brady on the depth chart as well. Trying to add another. But in this national semifinal, down by 12. Trying to stop a TCU third and 10. The Horn Frogs at their own 36. Max Duggan only 8 for 21 for 95 yards, and they still have a 12-point lead. Pressure picked up nicely by De Mercado, and the pass is intercepted. Deflected and picked off by Mike Sandristel. Caromed off Darius Davis. And wound up in the hands of Sane Ristel. Yeah, this is just a miss by Darius Davis. It's a good throw by Max Duggan. He steps up in the pocket. He's going to hit Darius Davis coming right inside here. This is a good throw. And Davis just not able to corral it, lets it get into his body, pops up in the air. And for the second time, we see a deflected ball that ends up as an interception for the Wolverines. Great field position now for J.J. McCarthy and the Michigan offense still looking for their first touchdown of the football game. What a time for St. Ristil's first career interception. Three years at wide receiver. Shifted over to defense to take the place of Dax Hill. Great safety. He was a first-round draft pick, and he's been a key force on this outstanding defense. Edwards knocked down hard by Travis Hodges Tomlinson. That's the thing I like about this corner. I mean, he is a physical guy. Everybody knows he's a great cover guy. Wins the Thorpe because of his cover ability. He told us yesterday he was a safety in high school, and he liked contact, being around the ball, being around the line of scrimmage. Didn't love playing corner, but now in college, it's that much more competitive, and he still gets to play physically. And he's become the best corner in the country in the opinion of the Thorpe committee. Edwards turned the corner. And they'll spot him out of bounds after he passed the marker. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, right before that interception, J.J. McCarthy just looked at his parents in the stands and mouthed very clearly, we're going to win this game. Don't worry. So the quarterback's confidence still really high. Why wouldn't it be? His dad, Jim, there in the background told me yesterday he has not lost a regular season game as a starting quarterback since his sophomore year in high school. Did lose in the state playoffs, as we mentioned, in Illinois. After Nazareth canceled his season for COVID, he went down to IMG Academy in Florida. 
Got One it. On the natty. Here's a flea flicker. Wide open. And a touchdown. Ronnie Bell. This is beautiful. They take advantage of the turnover. Now, Horningford's in. He's the big running tight end. They're going to give the ball here and watch Ronnie Bell show block and run by. TCU sees the handoff. The safeties bite. They come up, and Bell runs right by the middle safety, Millard Bradford. Beautiful execution. We saw a trick play blow up on him early. That time executed to perfection. And the extra point good by Moody. 34 yards on the flea flicker. Flea flicker. Great call by the co-offensive coordinators. Sharon Moore and Matt Weiss. And J.J. McCarthy trying to back up those words he spoke to his family a moment ago. Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Be presented to the National Champion Week from Monday in Los Angeles. Reserve your 2023 College Football Playoff National Championship game experience with Playoff Premium, the ultimate experience that offers exclusive package options, great seating locations, inclusive hospitality, and many other premium amenities. Visit playoffpremium.com to reserve your championship experience. Jake Moody kicks off. Momentum clearly on the side of Michigan. And roll reversal for these two teams. So often this year, it's been Michigan protecting the lead. It's Ronnie Bell helping to bring them back. Well, very quiet first half, but so far early, a couple big explosive plays out of the slot, down the middle of the field. And he's using a little technique of just a little hesitation, causing those defensive backs to get flat-footed and then running by him. And not only the leading receiver on this Michigan team, but one of the real leaders of this football team as well. One of the great receivers in the history of their program, who blew up his knee at the beginning of last season, didn't play in the college football playoff. Duggan stepped away from a rush, going deep for Johnston. He hauls it in. And out of bounds there, the 30 of Michigan. When you're on the ropes, go to your stars. Michigan tried to bring pressure. Duggan read it, stepped up, maneuvered in the pocket, and knew he had single coverage with Johnston working on Rod Moore and was able to get him the football. 46 yards, third catch for Johnston. Now it's De Mercado. He's inside the 15. This is the best big strike offense in the country, and they got another big play when they needed it most. I mean, that's a long developing play, crossing all the way to the deep other side of the field, and it was all because Max Duggan was able to maneuver in the pocket, and by that time, what a response by the Horned Frogs right here. Come back after the interception, after a Michigan touchdown, and you're right back down in the red zone. Deemer Cottle. Again, they're without Kendry Miller if you're just tuning in. Kendry out with what looked to be an ankle injury. Akari Page stopped the run by Deemer Cottle, who's from Inglewood, California. His house is within walking distance of SoFi Stadium. If they can win this game, he'll watch his family walk to the national title game at L.A. There's a matchup down here. Johnson against D.J. Turner. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage for Max Duggan. Will there be safety help over the top or not? Yes, it's coming now. De Mercado swung down at the six. Here's Tiffany. Hey, Sean, you mentioned Kendra Miller. Well, I've observed him on the sideline eating goldfish. The helmet's off. It doesn't appear he's going to go back in this game, which is a tough break. For TCU because Max Duggan said he makes their offense go. He's so powerful and elusive. De Mercado powerful enough to bounce off the hit and give them first and goal at the one. 
can't emphasize enough how impressive TCU has been in the red zone against a Michigan defense that's been one of the best in the country at preventing touchdowns. De Mercado, touchdown TCU. Wes Harris, the right guard, is one of the leaders of the team. Watch this. He gets into Chris Jenkins and then releases for the linebacker. He gets two big-time blocks, turns the defensive lineman over to the tackle, gets to the next level on the linebacker, and DeMarcado follows him right into the end zone. Kel, the extra point. What a response by TCU without their star running back. They go 75 yards in sixth place. Just the third touchdown Jesse Minter's defense has given up in the second half over the last nine games. The challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. Back in Atlanta. The Ohio State Buckeyes have arrived for their semifinal matchup in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl against Georgia, led by C.J. Stroud, twice a finalist of the Heisman Trophy, including this season. Sour taste in their mouths. Undefeated season, ruined by Michigan. Didn't even get to the Big Ten title game, but a chance to rewrite their story. Here's A.J. Henning. All the way across the field and yanked down at the 22-yard line. Well, that scoring drive was six plays, but the biggest play was a 46-yard throw to Quentin Johnson. What I want you to see is watch Max Duggan move in the pocket and buy time. Michigan has had success blitzing. Now, right now, here's Johnston. He's going to hit him with the football way over here. He has to buy time in the pocket. Watch him maneuver, maneuver, keep his eyes downfield, and deliver the football. That was the biggest play in that six-play scoring drive generated by Max Duggan. So now it's J.J. McCarthy's turn. He's led them to scores on their last three possessions. Under pressure, he dumped it off. And it's caught by Ronnie Bell, blasted by D. Winters. If there's any doubt about the physical nature of this TCU team, that's been eliminated today. Ronnie Bell a little hobbled getting up at the end of that play. We already saw Roman Wilson get knocked out of the game for a few plays or series. And now Ronnie Bell gingerly going to the sideline and they're without he's their leading receiver for the year they're without their second leading receiver Luke Schoonmaker the tight end for the rest of the game he's on the bench out of uniform with an ice bag on his shoulder Donovan Edwards stopped two yards short of the first down there's Schoonmaker 35 catches and he missed time this year missed two games due to injury No Blake Corm as well. They've managed to remain undefeated without him to this point. But you really feel they miss him around the goal line in particular in this one. McCarthy incomplete and picked off. Intercepted by D. Winters and a touchdown. Continuing to play the game of his life. Uh, unbelievable play by D. Winters. Had eyes on the quarterback the whole time. J.J. McCarthy was trying to get the ball to Colston Loveland on a slant route. But he did not see D. Winters inside with his eyes right on it. 29 yard return, trouble with the hold. And the extra point fails. Jordy Sandy had difficulty with the ball. So they get the six on their second pick six of the day. D. Winters has been all over the place, and on this play, he 
is just going to read the quarterback. Here he is. He's in zone coverage. But his eyes are right here on J.J. McCarthy. Watch J.J. try to hit Colston Loveland on the slant. And D. Winters just reads it and drifts right in front of the throw. And a second pick six in the ball game for this TCU defense that has played an outstanding football game. They've held up against the run. They've held Michigan to under 100 yards rushing. They've turned them over now four times. Unbelievable. Or three times, I guess it is. Yep. But it's a Michigan team that have turned it over seven times all year. I and mean, everything that right. got Michigan to 13 and 0 is right. out the window, at least so far today. They've turned it over. They can't run the ball or stop the run. And they can't score in the red zone. They can't score in the red zone. Very uncharacteristic day, really, from the start. On the opening possession of the game, they got down to the goal line, went for a touchdown in fourth and two, ran a trip play that did not succeed. Here's Henning. Out to the 31. So you mentioned it earlier, we spoke to Sonny Dykes yesterday, the TCU coach about Michigan. He said one of the things he admired, they lean heavily on the run, obviously, and they stick with it when other coaches might give up. Yeah. Can they stick with it now in this situation with time running out in the third quarter down 18? Well, we're, we're still in the third quarter, so I still think they have to because a couple reasons. They're not built to just drop back and throw it every down. Their receivers aren't elite. And Donovan Edwards is one of your best players on your team, so you can't take him out of the football game. He still has to be a factor for you. But uh, it, it's getting harder and harder to continue to do what they like to do. McCarthy had the double clutch, and it went way over the head of Donovan Edwards. Michigan trying to end a five-game bowl losing streak. They had given up, Todd, 13 points off of turnovers all season. They've given up 13 points off turnovers today. J.J. McCarthy, plenty of time. Can he find someone? He does, but Loveland to not hang on to the ball. It looks With like there's a flag Bradford down. in coverage. Flag down on the opposite side of the field. Looks like they were indicating holding. Holding. Defense number 24. The 10 yard penalty is enforced in the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. It's Josh Newton plays the corner opposite Hodges Tomlinson. He was first team all conference in the Big 12. Working on Ronnie Bell. And as Ronnie Bell turned inside, you can see that jersey move on the receiver. I'll tell you, these two corners remind me of Cincinnati's duo last year. Kobe Bryant. Won the Thorpe Award, Sauce Gardner, great NFL prospect, great year with the Jets. Same thing with these two guys, Tomlinson and Newton. Because of their skill, it allows TCU to keep a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage. Trust your corners and play loose. McCarthy takes off running, has a lot of running room. J.J. McCarthy inside the 30, still doesn't go out of bounds. And has a long gainer to the TCU 20. Finally knocked out by Jamoy Hodge. One of the dangers of playing man defense is you turn your back to the quarterback and you lose contain and you get out of your rush discipline and a guy like McCarthy or Duggan will make you pay for that. Defensive backs are running with their back to the quarterback. They have no idea what's happening. And the defensive lineman got out of sorts. And J.J. McCarthy made him pay. 39 yard run. Bell one in motion. Design run for McCarthy. JJ McCarthy of Michigan touchdown. Pretty good runs by that guy. If you bet against either one of these quarterbacks, you do so at your own peril. They're going to go for two now. It's a 12 point game. Mom, Megan, Dad, Jim. 
They drove 25 hours here from Chicago. They were supposed to fly like so many Americans. Travel issues. They said we weren't going to risk missing this. Megan said they were like the Griswolds driving around the country. Going for two. Would it be another design run for the quarterback? Yes, it is. And he is stopped by Johnny Hodges. Remember they tried to throw that quick screen to the left. I don't know if this was a, a run pass option, but J.J. decided to keep it, and Johnny Hodges kept him up short. Do you see the gesture by Hodges, too? Was he saying J.J.'s too small? <laughs> I don't know. They didn't like when J.J. McCarthy said, if they play 3-3-5, it's going to be smash fest. If anything, it's been the defense of TCU that's ruled the day. Yeah. Two scores themselves. Still a long way to go. McCarthy and the Wolverines with the response. That was a nice scramble off schedule and then a design quarterback counter. They pulled the backside guard and tackle and uh, excellent blocking at the point of attack. You and I had a chance to talk to JJ's family yesterday at their hotel. JJ was also a terrific youth hockey player. He was about 14 or 15. Played both. He got to the point where he was so good at either one that he had to pick one. He chose football, and his mom cried for two weeks. She's a figure skater. He loves hockey. He probably picked the right sport. Here's Darius Davis out of bounds near side at the 22-yard line. Well, it's been a while. Third quarter, Michigan has outscored TCU 16 to 13. Well, the lead flicker didn't work early, it did that time. Great response by TCU coming right back down the field. And then just moments ago, we had the pick six, the interception by D. Winters. J.J. McCarthy shakes it off, says, I'll call my own number. Quarterback power. Michigan misses the two-point conversion, but still very much in this football game. Imari DiMercato tripped up, or he had a lot of green grass. Braden McGregor, the critical tackle that stopped it after an eight-yard game. Yeah, McGregor did a good job of staying at home, first of all, and waiting to see who was going to get the football. And then he was able to just kind of stick his arm in there and trip up DiMercato. You know, he's kind of in a bind. He doesn't know whether the quarterback's going to run it or he's going to hand it off. And he made a nice play. Approaching the final minute of the third quarter. Pressure from both ends. They run past it again. DiMarcado off to the races. They do have an angle. And they knock him down at the one. Sixty nine yard run. And now dug it. They try to help him in. Touchdown. Michigan is trying to be aggressive and blitzing more. He's coming on the blitz. Colson outside. And all that means is there's nobody on the second level with the defense. So when DeMarcado gets to the second level, he's only there as Grant. And Junior Colson is not able to bring him down. He misses the tackle. We talked about the depth. TCU has it running back. DeMarcado stepping in for Kendra, Kendra Miller in a big way. But when you're having the kind of season they're having as Kell has the extra point, that's what happens, right? One of your stars goes down, yep. who's going to step in and deliver? And then Dean Mercado is that man today. That's the longest run of his career. And it's a career high 138 yards rushing. Look at that. Michigan outrushed 12 of their 13 opponents by over 100 yards. And they're getting outrushed today significantly by this Horned Frog team. 
talked about Michigan's offensive line. We also said, you know what? TCU is a little more physical than people give them credit for, mm -hmm. and they like to believe that they can run the football against anybody, and uh, we're seeing that today. We talked about how great both of these teams have been in the second half. Yep. And Sonny Dyke said, yeah, Michigan wears you down the way they play. But we do that too. You know, one of the reasons we've been able to come back is because our offensive line leans on people and wears them down. And we're able to score a lot of points in the second half. Well, they keep trading scores, but that's not going to work for Michigan. On the verge of the fourth quarter here. It's a touchback. Playing for the Verbo Fiesta Bowl trophy. This looks like uh, something might come out of your jewelry <laughs> box. Lots of 18 karat gold, marble, granite. There are more than 2,100 diamonds. It weighs 200 pounds. <laughs> Molly McGrath will be picking that up at the end of the game during the presentation to hand it to the winning team. <laughs> That's quite a trophy. They said it's valued at $1.4 million. <laughs> it's not like the little participation trophies you get in your kit. Long throw, caught Roman Wilson. First down, 44 yard line. It's the second or third time they've hit that same route. Roman Wilson coming out of the slot or Colston Loveland, and the outside breaking route has been open. McCarthy has been on target with that throw. Side of a minute of going to the fourth quarter here. And they have to go quickly now. High throw incomplete. Tried the same thing the other side. Inside route or inside receiver breaking outside. Penalty markers down. Miller Bradford in coverage. Holding defense yep. number 28. The 10 yard penalty is enforced in the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. Anytime you see that jersey jump or that that guy's back pull back, you know that's that's the penalty. I mean he's in good position, but just instinctively reached out and grabbed and and that's the call. And the right call. Joe Gillespie talking about how Bradford's such an important man in that defense. They play with five defensive backs. He's the one whose role can vary a yes. lot. He can be right up in the box on a Trying to stop the run. He can be deep in coverage. He can be in man to man coverage. McCarthy on target. Bell again lunging for the end zone. Touchdown. It's the slot receivers keeping them away from Hodges, Tomlinson, and Newton. Those are the guys that are making the big plays. You keep the corners outside. You put your receiver you want to throw to in the slot. He's working on a center, Obiazor, and he gets him to the end zone. Excellent read and throw, and really a great on the call. Play is under video review. Hold Time your out. breath. Yep, yep, that's going to come Is that back. a touchdown? Looks like uh, the knee down and the ball short. Kind of need to see it for sure down the line. Right here, we'll see it. The AT&T 5G pylon camera. Looks like his knee might be down right there. Ball reached out. Tremendous effort by Ronnie Bell. Of course, we saw Roman Wilson with a play similar down just inside the one. Was first ruled a touchdown. This was first ruled a touchdown. the ball is going to be inside the one yard line. All right, Matt Austin, what say you? I, I think he's short. I think that when the knee hits the ground, the ball looks like it's about a football length away from the line. What are the odds of you having two calls like this in the same <laughs> game, right? Two plays that were ruled touchdowns and both would potentially get overruled and the ball placed inside the one. David Allman, the replay official. There is collaborative replay from a neutral conference, and it's been coming from a command center in Pittsburgh. 
So David Allman is having input into these reviews, but he is the ultimate judge. After video review, the runner's knee was down prior to the ball crossing the goal line. It'd be first to goal, a half yard short of the goal line. Well, this physical, powerful, offensive football team has had trouble a lot of the day punching it in. What will they do here? They got Kalel Mullings in the game again. Again, this guy has not been at running back full time for more than a couple weeks. He's in the end zone here. Back and forth they go here in the third quarter. What great push by the center. Oluwatimi and Zach Zinner, the right guard. Gotta go for two again here, right? Appears they will try to make it an 11 point game or an 8 and 3 could tie. Mullings from West Roxbury, Massachusetts. His third touchdown of the season. The try for two. McCarthy keeps and walks in untouched. Well executed. Donovan Edwards is the guy in motion. He draws some eyes by the defense. Then watch. Watch the backside guard and tackle pull. This is the same run that McCarthy scored on earlier. Actually, it's the center in the backside tackle that pull on that one. And into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Well, this is back to the first half. Controversial play originally ruled a touchdown and changed to just short and they fumbled the ball away. This one ruled a touchdown, ruled to be just short after replay review. This time they score. A lot of football to go here in the desert. Three seconds in the third quarter. Both of these teams rave about their strength and conditioning, coaches and staff how that prepares them to win games in the fourth quarter and impose their will. We're going to see that on display from both teams here in the final 15 minutes. We talked about how these two quarterbacks really drive the team, not just with their talent, but with their competitive fire. And will to win. And they're matching each other play for play and score for score. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan maybe backs off their pressure because the pressure has hurt them on a long pass and a long run. Max Duggan is 9 for 23 with two interceptions in the game. De Mercado ahead. The ball's out. No whistle yet. And Michigan has the ball and the officials say it's theirs. Mozzie Smith came up with it. But they'll certainly take a look at it to see if DeMarcano was down. First down, Michigan. Mozzie Smith was the guy trying to rip it out. They had him stopped for a very short game. They'll continue to take a look at. It. Was he down before that ball squirted out? America awaits the verdict when we come back. Officials still looking at the replay to determine if it was indeed a fumble on the last play of the third quarter by Mari DiMercato. And Todd, after a lot of looks at it, you think it is. I think it is because I don't think there's anything definitive to overturn the call. The, the call in the field was a After fumble. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. It's first down Michigan. Now three turnovers apiece in this game by two teams coming in that were two of the best in the country at taking care of the football. 
Maybe part of that is the long layoff from the end of the season to playing a full speed game again. But nonetheless, great opportunity here for Michigan to claw their way right back in it and make it a one score game. And their offense is cooking now. From the TCU 27 after the highest scoring quarter in CFP history 44 combined points in the third quarter 24 for Michigan Edwards got eight on first down so many strange things today Michigan hadn't given up 21 points in any half this year they gave up 21 to TCU in the first half and 20 more in the third quarter <laughs> the 41 points allowed by Michigan by far the most this season. Maryland scored 27 against them at the big house back in late September. Second and two. Wilson. Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson airborne. Touchdown. Up and over Josh Newton. And 18. Amazing execution on that play by Michigan. Let's see for sure as we take a look at the ESPN AT&T 5G pylon cam. Unbelievable execution. Watch the right guard and the right tackle. Now watch Colston Loveland right here with the key block. Roman Wilson cuts inside of him. And then another block at the end of the play by Cornelius Johnson. Four outstanding blocks on that play for the touchdown. Going for two to make it a field goal game. Ronnie Bell gets the two. This is just Ronnie Bell here because the right tackle Carson Barnhart was supposed to get a block. And Ronnie Bell said, I can't wait any longer, man. I'm going by myself. Barnett, Barnhart didn't get there. Ronnie Bell said, I can get in myself. And Michigan now down three. Again, the execution of the touchdown, the block by Colston Loveland coming out of the backfield, and the effort by Roman Wilson. What resiliency by both of these football teams is unbelievable. And it's not surprising. They demonstrated it throughout the year. What a day for Wilson. An 18 yard rushing score and he has four catches for 99 yards. And very nearly a touchdown that was overturned. It will be long debated. That decision. Moody bounces it down the field. Darius Davis stopped in his tracks at the 22 yard line. Stopped at the 22 and a penalty that's going to back TCU up even further. So bad field position on this drive coming up for TCU. Joe Taylor, the play on special teams for the fired up Wolverines. There's no foul for an illegal block in the back. It's first down TCU at the end of the run. Nervous anxiety in the student section for TCU. So much time left. I mean, we got a full quarter of football left to be played in this back and forth thing. And Max Duggan, again, has really not had a hot hand. 9 of 23, 141 yards and a touchdown, but also the two interceptions. But we've seen him get hot even when things aren't going great. Right? It doesn't always look pretty, but in the final analysis, it's, it's almost always effective. Gamer Cotto, after the huge fumble on his last carry, taken down by Will Johnson after a gain of two. Well, and you can really feel the effect of no Kendra Miller, not just because of his talent, but just being able to alternate he and D. Mercado to keep them both fresh in the fourth quarter. They don't have that luxury now, and they're going with one running back only. 
Beamer, Cottle, and Miller are the only two running backs who have carried the ball, and Max Duggan has rushed ten times. Gain of three on first down officially. Duggan had it batted down. He was hit as he tried to throw it by Mike Morris. Boy, what a rush by Mike Morris. I mean, he ran right through John Lance, the right guard, and got in there and got a hand on the football. He's not built like your typical edge defender. He's big. He's 6'6", 290, and he's learned how to play to his strengths and his power, and that's why he's still an excellent pass rusher, because he knows how to utilize his power. Huge third down and seven here. Michigan blitzes. Duggan dumps it off short. Quentin Johnston has the first down, and off he goes. They are not going to catch him. No flags. The magic continues for TCU. If you choose to go after Max Duggan, you better get home because he is going to drift and give himself enough time to find his big receiver crossing the field. And then DJ Turner whiffs on the tackle. He's 6'4", 215, and he has 4'4", four, four speed in the 40. 76 yards, matches the longest reception of his career. And this big play offense does it again. They have scored 48 after the extra point against the Michigan team that was giving up 13.4. Are you ready? Third down and long. Michigan elects to bring pressure. And that bites him with a missed tackle. And off to the races for Quentin Johnston. The Verbo Fiesta Bowl coming up next, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, the other national semifinal. Stetson Bennett and the number one Georgia Bulldogs on the field warming up for their encounter with fourth-ranked Ohio State. Scheduled to start right around 8 o'clock Eastern time. Quentin Johnston. Sonny Dykes told us one of the very first things he did when he got the job last December was drive to the Johnston home in Temple, Texas to convince Quentin he wanted to remain a Horned Frog. The kicker slipped Laminac on the kick. Henning out across the 25-yard line. This is the third highest scoring game, 86 combined points in the nine-year history of the CFP, it's the 17th game. Of course, there was that Wild Rose Bowl, Georgia and Oklahoma, LSU and Oklahoma in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, the LSU route on their way to the national title. During the return, illegal block below the waist, receiving team number 34. The penalty is half the distance to the goal to be first down Michigan. Well, we saw a penalty flag come out on the Return for TCU that was picked up. And TCU maintained pretty decent field position. This one enforced against Michigan, and they'll start this drive inside their own 15-yard line. Uh, Leon Franklin. Michigan held the two field goals in the first half. Has come to life. But as we said a moment ago, they can't keep matching scores. They need the defense to get a stop. Here's McCarthy. Gain of six. Still plenty of time. You don't have to panic. You know, that's the one thing about this TCU team we've seen all year. They never panic. They've been in close games, one possession games, comeback games. They're very comfortable. This is new territory a little bit for Michigan in the fourth quarter, but they can't panic. They can't abandon the run right now either. McCarthy finally threw it away, given a lot of time. But against that three-man rush, the eight-man coverage effective. 
And now there's a debate about whether or not this is intentional grounding. Well, he did not leave the pocket, so that's why it's a question. Intentional grounding, offense number nine. The penalty is loss of down at the spot of the foul, third down. He was clearly throwing it away to avoid the rush, and he had not left the tackle box. So because he was not outside the tackle box, he doesn't have the ability to throw this away like that. If he's about three yards further to the right, he can throw it up in the seats, and it's okay. Well, every time either of these teams have been up against it in the second half on offense, they've delivered. You cannot afford a mistake here or be greedy if you're J.J. McCarthy. Still 12 and a half to go. They rush four this time. Winters got a piece of him and forced to throw away. P. Winters has had one heck of a football game. And again, the difference between that play, even though there were receivers in the area, he was clearly outside of the tackle box. D. Winters is going to come on another delay blitz. Nobody picks him up. And McCarthy just has to unload the football. And Darius TCU Davis. fans are happy that winners like those purple gloves yeah, when he was no in kidding. the eighth grade. Darius Davis is a great punt return. He did not return punts their last two games because of an injury. Very dangerous. And Robbins' kick comes down at the 47. He has blockers on the near side. Darius Davis shoved out of bounds hard, but he's inside the 20. Ola Ola with Timmy, the center, saved the touchdown. He's one of the premier punt returners, not just in the Big 12, but in all of college football. He gets it, and he shows you the speed that he has. Clean block there, and an escort along the sideline, and TCU in great field position inside the red zone. Their defense backed them up. The punt was short and low, and Darius Davis comes through. It was Mason Graham, their other number 55, who knocked him out. Five career punt return touchdowns for Davis, the school record. Most among any active player, and he very nearly had another. He brought a 40-yard punt back 31 yards from the 16. Perhaps a chance to deliver a knockout punch. That was the longest return of a punt given up by Michigan this year. Duggan. Yanked down by Rod Moore. So right now, if you're Sonny Dykes and Garrett Riley, you, you don't really want to play with tempo, right? Even though that's kind of been your M.O., you've got a 10-point lead, and you have the ability not only to put more points on in this drive, but to limit the opportunities Michigan is going to have left in the football game. So you want to play clock a little bit if you're Max Duggan. Don't slow completely down, but utilize the clock to your advantage. Johnston took the forward flip and slips down. This field's been an issue a lot of the days. He jammed the brakes on. He went down. Rod Moore was there. And you can see the frustration in Quentin Johnston. He told Sonny Dykes in that conversation, Coach, I'm staying. I love TCU. I don't care really who the coach is. I love the TCU community. And that was kind of Max Duggan's attitude when he got benched in the first week. I mean, he didn't want to go anywhere. He loves TCU and the community. They have been quite the combination in this magical season in Fort Worth. Content to milk the clock. I think Sonny's going to use a timeout when it ticks all the way down. Timeout has been called by TCU. It's their second of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. The 10 43 to go. Jim Harbaugh and Michigan down by 10. Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest on ABC tonight. It's the preeminent destination for viewers to ring in the new year. The nation's most watched New Year's Eve celebration, in fact, coming live from Times Square. There's a live look at Times Square in New York City. Superstar music performances and New Year's celebrations from all around the world. The great 
tradition started by the late great Dick Clark. Sean, one guy for TCU who's been pretty quiet in the ball game so far is tight end Jared Wiley. But in this part of the field, he becomes a, a, a real weapon. You know you've got the big receivers, Johnson and Savion Williams on the outside. But right here, Wiley, a dangerous receiver in the red zone. Damer Cottle, very conservative play on third down and seven. Sandra still the tackle. And they'll let a lot of clock run down before they kick the field goal. Sonny Dykes told us yesterday Griffin Kell, the kicker, is actually better <laughs> when he runs on <laughs> and kicks it as he did on the last play at Baylor. Made a 40 yarder, a run on, walk off field goal from 40 yards. Keep their undefeated season alive. One of the many signature plays of this incredible season. The field goal is good from 33. And they have scored 51 against Michigan, but still a two score game. This field goal set up by Darius Davis. 10.02 to go in the Valley of the Sun. is brought to you by Verbo, a place for together. AT&T 5G, too much college football is never too much. And Taco Bell, Taco Bell is giving back to students all postseason long by giving them free tickets to the biggest bowl games of the year. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. These two teams trying to make the trip to Los Angeles for the championship game next Monday night. 51 points, the bowl game record for TCU. Second most ever allowed by Michigan in a bowl game. And remember, Michigan coming into this game only allowing 13.4 points per game. Fifth best in all of college football. Crazy. And they've given up 51 today. Of course, two of those touchdowns scored by the TCU defense. The Michigan gave up 52 to Mississippi State in the 2011 Gator Bowl. The only time they've given up more. This is their 50th bowl game. The performance of J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, in the second half, he has really come alive throwing the football down the field. Good protection. 316 yards passing and a touchdown. He's overcome the earlier interception, and when he's needed to run, he's made good decisions. Either improv or by design, J.J. McCarthy is trying to put this team on his back and bring him back here in the fourth quarter. Pretty much a must-score drive for Michigan. With under 10 minutes to go, down by 13, McCarthy over the head of Colston Loveland. You know, if you're TCU now with a 13-point lead, you're, you're going to rush three, and you're going to try to keep everything in front. Don't give up those big throws down the middle of the field or the seam routes. Don't get risky. Don't gamble. Make them just methodically move the ball down the field because it's a two-score game. And twisting up front, the pass juggled and dropped by Colston Loveland. Not seen him drop too many passes. That time he was already thinking about turning up field and running with the football before securing the catch. It's a good throw. And watch, he just turned his head momentarily to see up field and didn't secure the catch. Now it's third and 10. And I don't think it's four down territory. I mean, you can't. You got to pump the football if you don't convert here because there's just under 10 minutes left in the game. McCarthy, they're content just to try to keep him contained, and they get him out of bounds after a very short game. He picked up one. They need nine, and Jim Harbaugh sending the punting team up. Yeah, it's the only thing he can do, and, and really a good defensive possession by TCU. They did not bring pressure. They rushed three or maybe four, 
and played coverage. And it was all zone coverage and keeping everything in front. And now, if you're Brad Robbins, does that last punt return by Darius Davis get in your head a little bit on this attempt? Well, they're well aware of what he has done throughout his career as a returner. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Thank you. The Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Year, Darius Davis, senior from St. Francisville, Louisiana. First team football writers, All American, as a punt returner this year. Robbins hangs on to the ball a long time before punting it. Fair catch signal. Davis oh, got out of the way. What a bounce. Why didn't he catch that? He had plenty of room to catch the football. Cost him 20 yards. Yeah. Landed at the 30. Kicked all the way down to the 10. 64 yard punt by Robbins. It was a Nick high Davis kick. Todd just didn't want to make a crucial mistake. Yeah, I get that. I get that, but boy, that's a heck of a bounce for Michigan. And they flipped the field. You know, they got a three and out, but they were able to flip the field with that bounce off the punt of Robbins. A 13 point lead for TCU. In the history of the semifinal round has been that they've been rough. You know, the average margin of victory of the Previous 16 semifinal games has been 21 points. Only three of the 16 decided by one possession. This might be a double digit final. It, it certainly has not been a rout. Dug in ahead for three. They had given up only 5.7 points per game in the second half. Coming to Glendale, they've given up 30 today. You know, and part of that is, and we had Michigan earlier in the year, and we looked at some of those defensive numbers and we said, yeah, that, that's impressive. But some of the offenses they faced in the Big Ten were not very good. Several of them were in the, not ranked in the top 100 of offenses. As you would say, triple digits yeah, is not good. Not good. The last three offenses have been good. Ohio State, Purdue, and this TCU team. Dug in after the fake. Davis the catch. Big tackle. Short of the sticks by D.J. Turner. Got and here comes time. a huge third down as we roll under eight minutes to go. Remember, D.J. Turner's the guy who missed the tackle on Quentin Johnston on the third down play that resulted in the long touchdown. That time, a very sure open field tackle. Does Michigan go after Max Duggan here or not? It's not paid off for them because Duggan feels it and drifts and maneuvers in the pocket well enough. Three out of six on third down this half. Seven out of 13 for the game. It's a screen for Mercado. They get the big tackle in space. Michael Barrett, the graduate student, had to have it. And he made that tackle to force a TCU punt. Yeah, Barrett's right here in the middle. So he's just watching this because they're bringing some pressure. And he's responsible for the back. And as soon as he reads this screen, he gets there, gets a good angle, and is able to take him down in space. A couple nice tackles by the Michigan defense on this possession to force the punt. There's Jordy Sandy. Michigan setting up a return. Sandy hangs it very high. And the fair catch made by A.J. Henning at the 44-yard line. 39-yard punt. 6.46 to go in our first semifinal. Here's a look at the college football playoff matchups brought to you by AT&T 5G. Michigan and TCU heading toward the finish line here outside Phoenix, then to Atlanta. Kenny McIntosh, outstanding running back. Good receiver out of the backfield for Georgia against Ohio State. Coming up next. They'll be challenged to match the entertainment value of this one. J.J. McCarthy. Fires. Low throw, diving attempt, and a catch by Cornelius Johnson. Second one of those where he's come back, adjusting to his quarterback on the move. Gets those hands underneath the football. Oh, uh oh that one, that one may not may Well, not he got stand. the playoff before a stoppage. 
McCarthy, the receiver, gets spun yep, around and sure flags did. flying from everywhere against Travis Hodges Tomlinson as he threw Bell around at the 15 yard line. Pass interference, defense number one. Well, credit. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot includes an automatic first down. Credit J.J. McCarthy for getting that ball snapped because that play would have gotten overturned, I think, and been an incompletion, and that was clearly pass interference. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and Tomlinson wasn't sure where it was. And so back-to-back -back plays, Michigan takes advantage. Michigan cannot afford any missteps here. They're down 13, and there's 6 minutes and 19 seconds left. No negative plays, no sacks, certainly no turnovers. Bell doesn't want to come toward the end of his career. He and Johnson, veteran receivers. Edwards taken out of bounds. He's over 100 for the third straight game. Jim Harbaugh said we had a good one-two punch for most of the year was Blake Corum. Edwards was injured, but both of the running backs have proven they are capable of taking it all on their shoulders yeah. if they have to, and that's what Edwards has done. They're different. I mean, they, they certainly miss the power and the make you miss ability of Blake Corum and just the being able to keep both of them fresh at a time like this in the game in the fourth quarter. We're using a lot of time. Here comes pressure. McCarthy blasted as he throws it. It's Dylan Horton. Yeah, Dylan Horton just went right between the right guard and the right tackle. For some reason, nobody thought it was his responsibility. And he made a beeline to the quarterback and forced the throw. I would think Todd four down territory, right? A field At goal. Time, it's still yes. a two possession game. Yep. And we're under six minutes to go. That, because of that, this could be a run. And it is. And it's Edwards bounced off a hit and got the first down. He got hit hard by Millard Bradford. If you're Michigan now, who are your go-to guys in this part of the field? I'd say Ronnie Bell and Colston Loveland if you throw it. They go quickly. They have an open receiver in the flat. It is Bell again. Valiant today. That one goes for seven. His sixth catch, 135 yards, and a touchdown for Bell. Edwards, slow handoff, and he's dumped by D. Winters. D. Winters has just timed his run blitzes so well. I mean, he's got eyes in the backfield, and he's just going to follow this play. He doesn't blitz right away. He gets the right angle. He allows the tight end, Colston Loveland, to get into his block before he lets go. And then he makes the play behind the line of scrimmage. 11 tackles for a loss for TCU. Third down and five. Clock seems like it's racing for Michigan now. McCarthy takes off running, got the first down, and got out of bounds inside the five. Nice job by McCarthy again. Nothing there. This was kind of a fire zone blitz. They brought the corner, but they played zone defense behind it. But because Tomlinson came from the outside, there was a lot of room for J.J. McCarthy to run to that voided area. A new set of downs, but the Matt clock White's is still Matt co-coordinator with Sharon Moore, the offensive line coach. They collaborate. I don't think they were aware that the game clock is running. First and goal. Four minutes to go in the semifinal. Mullings broke free but didn't get much further. Jamoy Hodge for TCU, and Michigan has to pick up the speed of the operation here. Substituting slowly, staring at the sideline. I mean, there's got to be a sense of urgency here, right? Now, if you run the ball out of bounds, the clock doesn't stop until you get inside of two minutes. So, I mean, you've got to go right now. McCarthy. Chased by Hodge, wide open, Wilson again!
Well, we've seen Max Duggan do this. Just kind of drift and give his receiver time, and the defender is going to fall down on this one. Roman Wilson kind of stumbles and stops, and the defender falls down right there. You see him fall down? He breaks wide open to the back of the end zone, but the ability of J.J. to kind of drift away from pressure enough to make the throw. We've seen Max Duggan do it, and now we've seen J.J. McCarthy do it. Here's Moody to make it a six-point game with 3.18 to go, and Michigan in possession of all three timeouts. That's a gimme. If you're playing golf, you give it to him. He's never missed an extra point. They went 56 yards in nine plays. Roman Wilson, a huge day for Michigan, and no controversy about that touchdown. C.J. Stroud, twice the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, trying to lead the Ohio State Buckeyes to an upset of the defending national champs, the number one team in the country again this year, the Georgia Bulldogs. That's when we're finished here at the highest scoring Verbo Fiesta Bowl ever, surpassing the Nebraska win 62-24 over Florida in 1996, the memorable performance by Tommy Frazier. called their third and final time out of the game. Wow. Michigan lined up almost like timeout. an onside kick formation, and TCU called timeout to readjust. I don't think there's any way in the world that Michigan is, is onside kicking here. Maybe Jim Harbaugh just wanted to get Sonny Dykes to well, use that last time. If he timeout. did, it was smart. Mm -hmm. look, look at this formation. I mean, and the kicker's only a couple yards from the ball. I mean, they're showing like it's going to be onside kick. And TCU is in a normal kick return formation. They don't have a hands team on. And special teams coach Mark Tomerdahl got Sonny Dykes to use the timeout. And now TCU with zero timeouts in Michigan, all three. There's the special teams coach. I just can't believe Michigan would onside kick here. Your defense has been great all year. They're in the same lineup here. Yeah. The defense has not been great today, but they I agree not. with you. Make them go long field, to go though. all of your timeouts. You've had now, one of the very best defenses in the country all year. And they kick it away. Cat and mouse. And Davis played it on the goal line and only got out wow. to the 11. Now that's the best case scenario for Michigan. You force Sonny Dykes to use his last timeout. He puts a hands team on the field so they can't set up a kickoff return. And then Darius Davis, you know, he can't let that ball bounce in the field of play because it's a live ball. And Michigan gets coverage on the kick and they get the long field for TCU to go now. Can't be too conservative here if you're TCU and Garrett Riley. Max Duggan has been a stud all year. In the brightest moments, he's made the biggest plays. And as you'd expect, they keep it in his hands. He's ahead for a couple. So far, no timeout called by Coach Harbaugh. Chris Jenkins made the tackle. I think they'll see what they do on this second down play. If they get a good stop here, he might use one of them. He's right down there by the yard marker, ready to make that call. Michigan trailed by 19 at 41 to 22. They've been the hunted in the second half most of the year. TCU has been the hunters with lots of comebacks. Roll reversal today. Which team will succeed in the new situation? Demer Cottle gets them very close to the first down and still no timeout. That was a heck of a run by Demer Cottle. I mean, you give yourself a lot of options here now on third and one. And you keep to working the clock. Harbaugh electing not to use one mm. and hoping his team can get a stop on third and short. Under two minutes to go. The 
They're going to push Duggan. First down, Horn Frogs. And you have to use a timeout now. And they're not. But I think Jim's going to try to stop it on the next three plays. A minute and a half to go. TCU can take it down around a minute 10 before they snap it. You wonder if Jack Harbaugh is wondering about why his son isn't calling a timeout. Amari De Mercado. There's the first timeout by Harbaugh. Mm -hmm. He's hoping for two this more quick stops the and force a punt with a little under a minute to go. Stay tuned. The, the Ram Trucks postgame hearing on ESPN. How would you like to have to edit the highlights or pick out the key <laughs> plays of right. this one? Yeah. yeah. We were just talking about it when Michigan got the ball. Thank you. If you were a TCU fan watching this right now and hoping that this incredible ride continues on to the national championship yeah. game for the Horned Frogs, one of the plays in this game, the big one, the missed extra point. Yep. They had trouble with the snap because yep. a seven-point lead would feel a lot more comfortable Absolutely. than six. And especially the way J.J. McCarthy has been lighting it up here in the second half. But uh, it's on the Michigan defense right now. Mm -hmm. Can they get a stop? They've got two more timeouts and two more chances to stop the clock if they can force a punt. Well, one more TCU first down. And this magical run's going to continue to L.A. Duggan. Four yards short of the first down. I mean, why not go to Hollywood, right? This has had the feel of oh, a boy. Disney movie yeah. all year long, particularly with Max Duggan in a starring role. This is 30 seconds in length. This is the game clock for one minute and four seconds. One, zero, four. Thank you. Well, remember earlier in the game, a long completion to Roman Wilson initially called a touchdown. And then it was overturned and moved back to the one. And the next play, there was a fumble by Kalel Mullen. Almost a sure touchdown for Michigan, taken off the board, and then a fumble, and they come up empty in the red zone. Now we're sitting here in a six-point game. But a lot has transpired. Since. Yes, it has. Third down and four. Got to believe Duggan runs it again here, although they will throw a slant to Quentin Johnson in a situation like that. I don't this. think you'd risk the incomplete stop the pass, stop the clock, though. They do throw it to him, and Johnson is taken down in bounds by D.J. Turner, and it's a yard short, and Michigan uses the last timeout. Timeout of the half. It'll be an extended timeout. Please reset the game clock to 59 seconds, 0-5-9. Another big you have tackle. To punt, don't you? Oh, yeah, have to punt. <laughs> Another big tackle by DJ Turner there. Again, he missed one earlier that resulted in a long touchdown. He's made a couple clutch tackles in space since then. None bigger than that one right there on third down. Now, what TCU may do, and Mark Tomerdahl may have this in his repertoire is a hard count or some kind of a shift to see if they can draw Michigan off sides and pick up a free first down since it's fourth and one. I wouldn't be surprised if they have some kind of shift, some kind of thing. In fact, right now they're bringing the offense back on the field. They may try to do that with their offense. Well, if they actually go for it, Remember, this guy right here is the guy who comes right in here and gets the push on Max Duggan. The backup tight end, Spivey. Here he TCU comes. has no timeouts. So they would take a five-yard penalty here if all they're trying to do is get him to jump. Three defensive linemen right over the ball for Michigan. If they go for it, it's one of the unbelievable decisions of all time. No, they're not going to go for it. No. They're doing a lot of moving around, trying to get Michigan to jump. They were ready for that. 
Worth a try, I guess, although it costs you five yards. Yeah. Good discipline by the Michigan defense. There's a lot going on on that formation and shifts and motions. And now J.J. McCarthy, you know, as a quarterback, these are the moments you dream about. The first, the punt, and we've talked about Davis. Henning is a dangerous punt returner. He brought one back for a touchdown against UConn back early in the season. And Jordy Sandy has to handle the snap and get the punt off. He does. Excellent punt. Henning back to his 25 and flattened right there. Outstanding coverage by Trent Battle. Wow, Trent Battle with an outstanding tackle. He's a backup running back. He hasn't carried the football today. But he did a beautiful job getting down there, not being there too early, and making a fine tackle on special teams. So with no timeouts, now you have to work the sideline. You have to be able to spike the football if you've got the right downs, and you've got to move with urgency. And you cannot take a sack or a negative play. You have to go 75 yards in 52 seconds. Field goal is meaningless. Already under siege, McCarthy. And he got away, got out of bounds with a five yard gain. It was Dylan Horton who looked plenty fresh on the pass rush who forced him to scamper. Now they've given Carson Barnhart the right tackle, Fitz. He's very quick. Dylan Horton off the ball and explosive. And that time he looked. He looked like he was playing the first quarter, and Barnhart looked like he's playing in the fourth quarter. Three-man rush. McCarthy almost intercepted. Mark Perry was going down to the ground. If he could have stayed on his feet, that might have clinched it. Again, because Michigan needs a touchdown, you can play with the top over the defense here. There's no reason to get beat deep. Keep your safeties deep, at least two of them, and force all the throws underneath. No reason to rush any more than three. False start. False start. Offense, number 18. Colston Loveland, Michigan, three out of 12 on third down today. Part of that has been the yards they need on third down. They've averaged seven yards they've needed on third down. This one even longer at third and 10. And that's not what Michigan is built for throwing the football. Joe Gillespie said yesterday we need to win on first down. And they've done that for a lot of the game. Third down and 10, 39 seconds to go. J.J. McCarthy had it batted down. Millard Bradford stepped in front of Donovan Edwards. And Michigan is down to one last must-have play. Ronnie Bell is your leader, your leading receiver. He and Roman Wilson, both over 100 yards receiving today. They're both on the same side of the field right up here. Trouble with the snap. It's picked up. Lateral to Edwards. He laterals it forward. And Loveland is tackled. And that will do it. An ugly last play for Michigan. It almost looked like Olawatimi snapped it before J.J. McCarthy was ready. Yeah, it looked like an illegal forward pass on that play yeah, as well. The end. I think the officials are talking about that. Watch. J.J. McCarthy was looking out to see the coverage, and the ball was snapped. He was not ready to receive it. And then it was just a mad scramble for anything. No, that's okay. The officials still conferring. It is TCU ball.
So last year, Michigan was the first preseason unranked team to make it to the playoff. They couldn't get past Georgia to get to the championship game. TCU this afternoon became the second preseason unranked team to make the playoff, and they will march on. Unbelievable year. Resiliency, great leadership by their quarterback. Under video review, timeout. Do you have any idea what they might be looking at? <laughs> I don't know. Let's bring in Matt Austin. I can see Matt in our monitor at his home, and oh. he's wearing the same perplexed look that we are. We're talking about a potential targeting. Would it be on Keon Stewart there, number two? Boy. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. There's 25 seconds left in the game. The game is over. Not sure that was the crown of the helmet. He's not Matt, a defenseless What do you say? Player. Do you see anything here that would meet the definition of targeting? Well, <laughs> the hit by number two, he does lower his head. He does hit with force. And he does hit with the crown of the helmet. Uh, I think this, by rule, this is targeting. Wow. This would be one of the all time replay review decisions. Well, and, and even if it goes Michigan's way and keeps them alive, they're still down to 25 seconds to go. But the point for TCU as they look to go on to the championship game is Keon Stewart in the last 25 seconds of the game is going to have to sit out now if this is a targeting in the first half of the championship game. I guess the he's good news backup. is he's, he's not a starter. No, right? he's kind of a deep bench player. But you want to have all hands on deck. Here's another look at it. It certainly is a a little reckless on the part of Stewart. I mean, you can't risk right. anything resembling targeting, especially when one of your teammates seems to have the play under control. Yeah. That was about the only way the game could have been extended. Again, David Allman, the replay official with collaborative replay back in Pittsburgh. And here it comes the verdict after video review there is no foul for targeting the sigh of relief from Stewart and the celebration resumes and the reality sets in Jim Harbaugh loves JJ McCarthy everything about him and that's easily understandable. Duggan takes a knee, fitting that the football is in his hands as they march on to the championship game. The Horn Frogs of TCU, led by Max Duggan, beat Michigan and J.J. McCarthy. And we saw on display Quentin Johnston, so many others. It's a talented TCU team. Even at the end of the year yeah. when people were debating, should they even be in the playoff? I think you and I kept saying, there's a tremendous amount yeah. of talent on well, this football team. And when they're healthy, as you could see from Quentin Johnston, when he's healthy, he's a difference maker. How will Kendra Miller be by the time it's time to play in the national championship yeah, That'll game. be a big story over the next nine days. Will they have their star running back when they take on either George or Ohio State? Here's Tiffany Blackman. Coach Dykes, you talked to us about the lack of bowl experience, that no one expected this TCU team to be here. Now you're going to play for a national championship. What does it feel like to do it with this team? Well, I mean, it shows what these guys are all about. I mean, they never give up. They play hard for 60 minutes. I mean, they're just great, great kids. I'm really proud of them. You know, they believed in each other and they believed in us and uh, just couldn't, couldn't be more proud, more excited to go play now. You said this team never gets rattled and that's because of your leader, Max Duggan. How is he always able to will this team when it matters the most? 
Well, he's just, he's tough. I mean, he's tough, nothing bothers him. He's just got that uh, confidence and belief in himself and in his teammates and couldn't be more proud of what these guys have accomplished. And, man, let's go, uh, let's go play our tail off next week and win one. Your defense sealed the deal for you guys at the end. How proud are you of the way they held up against Michigan? Yeah, they've done it all year. I mean, you know, these guys did an incredible job stopping the run. I think all week we heard about, you know, Big Ten football and how they're going to line up and run over us. And, and, I mean, defensively, you know, they made some plays, but, but we did a great job stopping the run and forced them to, to do some things they probably weren't comfortable doing. So couldn't be more proud of the defense. Thought they played incredibly hard and, and um, you know, just like we expected them to. How closely will this team be watching the Peach Bowl tonight? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm anxious to go watch it right now, see who we're going to get to play. But like I said, just can't say enough about these guys and how thankful we are to, to be here. Congratulations, Coach. Now let's send it to Molly with Max Duggan. Thank you, Tiffany. Max, after the Big 12 championship game, you were in tears because you wanted this team to win a conference title. Now you're headed to the national title. Where are your emotions right now? Yeah, no, this is, you know, it's so exciting. You know, we're going to celebrate this one, but, you know, we got a bigger one coming up, and that's, that's the one that we want. So, you know, that, that's one we're looking forward to. A back-and-forth game with momentum shifts. What was your mentality in this game, especially without your running back, Kendra Miller? Yeah, momentum's huge, especially in college football. You know, whoever has it, you know, is probably going to be pretty successful. And I, I think our guys did a great job of, uh, of staying neutral, you know, not getting too highs on, um, you know, on the highs, not getting too low. Um, just continuing to fight, continuing to, you know, stay grounded. And I think you saw our guys fight, you know, till the very end. Ahead of this game, everyone was talking about how physical Michigan was. How did you guys take that personally, and how are you the more physical team on both sides of the ball today? Yeah, no, I think our boys kind of took it took it to the chin, especially our defense, guys up front, you know, receivers, running backs, um, doing their thing because, you know, we want to be the tougher team. You know, that's what we kind of uh, um, take to our chest and are, are proud to be. It's tough and gritty um, and continuing to fight, and I think that's what, you know, we, we showed today. Unranked to start the season, and now you're headed to the national championship. How do you describe this storybook season? It, it's been eventful, and I think it starts with Coach Dykes and the culture he brought into us. Uh, you know, n nothing outside of our walls, um, opinion-wise, mattered. You know, it was only what we thought, only, you know, the way that we see our team, and that's what matters right now. All right, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Sean. And yeah, Molly, remarkable story. The ending still to be written. Sonny Dykes, he told us his previous three head coaching stuffs, the first year is usually a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> this year is not rough. He's the first... Uh, First year head coaches program to take a team to the title game since Gus Malzahn with Auburn back in 2013. And you know, somewhere in his heart, Mike Leach, his mentor and friend who gave him the opportunity to get started in coaching. He's smiling down on Sonny Dykes. Rest in peace, Coach Leach. Thanks to our great crew. It's been our honor to work with all season long, led by Josh Hoffman and Scott Johnson. Todd Blacklich, you, Molly, Tiffany are truly the best. TCU is a winner. 51-45 will send you to Atlanta for the Peach Bowl. And the ceremonies on ESPN News.